Right, welcome to the Leggett Podcast. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Feel Supreme. Um, massive, massive thanks to them um, because they've been brilliant to us. Um, I use their CBD. I think I've got the 500 milligram CBD. Um, use it every single morning with my coffee. I'm flying in the morning, loving it. Um, and then you've got the, I think we talked about last time, didn't we? We touched yeah, on the last Lion time. Yeah, Lion Main. Yeah, Lion Main, yeah. So um, basically, obviously a Liverpool-based company. All of their products are 100% natural, organic, uh, and vegan friendly. And they've got, um, obviously, with some of the things we want to try and push, uh, that obviously Leggett like Podcast listeners, people at home, is uh, Lion's Main, uh, the mushrooms that they've got, the CBD as well, which obviously I've got, 500 mil, milligram. Um, and... Basically, there's loads of others. I'll put the link below in the description as well. And there's a link. Basically, if you use that link, it's a way of them tracking, obviously, some purchases. And it, it basically helps them continue to support the podcast. So really, really appreciate Feel Supreme as well. So massive thanks to them. Yeah, massive thanks to Feel Supreme. Radio. Ready. This episode of the podcast, I'm excited, mate. We have Michael Shields. Thanks nice. so much for coming on, mate. No worries. Thank no worries. you, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much as well. Really, really, really appreciate this. I feel, mate, it's um, in the podcast game. I don't know if you listen to podcasts much and stuff, but you tend to find that someone will come on and then they end up doing the rounds of the podcast. And so you end up kind of wanting to see someone, but then you've heard them on another podcast and it's the same story where I think for you, it's a bit of an exclusive because you've you've yeah. never really done it like yeah, this, have you? Yeah, it's the first, first one I've ever done. Yeah. So, probably the first and last, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, I feel for them, I mate. Yeah. <laughs> for, so for that, mate, I, uh, I really appreciate it. Okay. And so not only thank you, mate, but I also think for me, I don't think there's many 21-year-olds I used to think that I've had a life as crazy as me. By the age of 21, I'd been to Iraq, I'd been to Afghanistan, I'd been blown up, I'd lost my leg, I had all this crazy shit going on in my life. I think you top it, mate, though. I don't know. You give me a good run for my money anyway, mate. It's it's, it's one of them, though. It seems like I like know that life now. Yeah. You get to a point like years later and you think, fuck, did that happen? How did that happen? Yeah. And yeah. You, you, you just forget that it did happen and then something will break, your tra- break into your mind and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know what that, I know what that's like, yeah, yeah. But it just seems like it's another lifetime, like it's like a. a like a film of watching years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not there all the time. It's just probably just it's over a good thing, time. I guess, it that, is. You know, you've, it you've is. It's just over stuff. time. It'll just disappear, which is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mate, no, honestly, I, I know you don't have to do anything like this, and I know it's probably a little bit strange for you, given that you've maybe not done anything like this before. But yeah. I mean, for me personally, mate, I, I remember this. I was only thirteen back in two thousand and five, and as soon as Andy mentioned your name, like, I, obviously the name. You know, ring so much bells, and, and and you don't have to do this, mate. So no, honestly, I really do fine. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You still get like funny looks with the name as well. You, you have to pick a package up from the post office, and someone goes, "I know that name." <laughs> no, you don't. You know, you don't. <laughs> but it is mate one of those names, Michael Shields. It, I think everyone in Liverpool, especially, you do remember. Yeah, mm. yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's always there. It's always there. So, mate, before uh, we get into what happens in two thousand, well, God, growing up, then a massive red. Yeah, yeah. Um, just just the thing to do it's you know what end or south end of uh, border Kenny Kenny border yeah that's say more that's more south I think yeah yeah, yeah I'd say think, south end yeah I'd say so yeah you're not getting to be a north end from <laughs> Kenny like. I'm a north end now but yeah I'd say it's south end but um, so and Liverpool just growing up just yeah, always going to the game I think like just, did that just take me till I was about what twelve, and then once you're at like eleven, twelve, because we we live quite close to the ground. I just go on your own, and it was always it was back then. Tickets were brilliant, just yeah. always there, up around your over than nine pound a ticket, just every game there. Me, and my cousins, or me, and my mates. Um, used to do the aways as well when you were like like fifteen, sixteen, up to like eighteen. When I, before I went away, uh, again, just the tickets were always dead easy back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's 2004, 2005 Champions League then had you been to many of the games that season? I, didn't, I, I, I had my season ticket then I got my season ticket about two years before that so I've been to, I've been to all the, the, the home games and then a few of the aways and everything on the European aways so the final was the first European away that I was allowed to go to was it yeah? yeah. yeah. and so how old were you then? 18 18, 18, 18 in 2005 yeah, yeah. Just, nearly 19 actually yeah. so 18 it's yeah 18, the September before yeah yeah, that was the first one at the second one. There was about ten of us going. So my parents were like, "All right, you can go then." That's sad. <laughs> so we, so you were at the home game for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, in the cop. Yeah. 
Did you go to Barcelona as well? 4 0 before Madrid? I did. I did. What was yeah. better for you? I seen a debate on Twitter oh. the other day whether it was Chelsea 2005 or Barcelona. I think atmosphere wise, you're never going to beat that Chelsea. But in terms of like a game of football at Barcelona, because <clears throat> you didn't expect it, yeah. I and mean, we went to a semi final, to be honest, I didn't expect No, I thought we were out. I was just going for a semi final. Even me, like, before the game into Chelsea's 2005 outside the ground was just like a carnival <clears throat> but Barcelona was you were just going the match it just, mm. you didn't feel like you were going to a semi-final I think once the, once the first goal went in because it was so early I thought it's happening this you know what I mean yeah. but I don't know I think one game that gets overlooked is probably the City at home we beat them 3-0 mm. that was just that was as good as like Chelsea I'd say the yeah, atmosphere yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah brilliant when we played that um, I always think when you think of Chelsea you think of the good Johnson moment and the oh, volley God, in the last yeah, minute Jesus um, <laughs> and uh, I, sp- I speak to Carragher and he says he still fucking thinks that goes in even when I mean? you watch it on the telly yeah. you're like how, I mean, how, do you, how do you not score that so that he misses that the ref blows the whistle did you think then I'm going I'm going to final yeah well it's funny at half time we were like, in, in the cop and was there and my cousin was <coughs> saying uh, I shouldn't take like, the get to the final book through Bulgaria it's cheaper and we were like sound sound and they were like they've already they'd already looked at it before the game. They were like booked through Bulgaria. You, that's it's and you just get the, the coach over. So she was the final whistle the next day straight away on the internet. The, the, the laptops, the, the PCs, then not the laptop. Yeah. Look, I know. Get to, we had to go from Liverpool to get a train to Glasgow, a flight from Glasgow then to, to Varna. So it was a bit of a trek just to get there in itself. But when there was like I think it was like ten of us going, you just that was part of it. You know Mixed the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a laugh. And did you get a ticket for the final? I had a ticket, yeah, I went with a ticket, luckily. Um, so I, I paid buttons for that as well, even them finals back then. It was like behind the goal, about 30 rows up. Ticket was about like £20 or something stupid, you know what I mean? Mm. Just brilliant, but yeah, that, that qualified for the ticket then. And you got in there, so you, go, go on, mate, because you go on, go on. Yeah, no, I'm just so you go from Liverpool to Glasgow, fly out to Bulgaria. To Varna, yeah. Do you have a night in Bulgaria first, or? We did, I think we flew on like a, um, maybe any day, but to be sure we flew on like a Monday morning, and then back then the day, the final, was, it Wednesday was the night, Wednesdays, yeah. yeah. So we, Monday night, we're in, um, in Bulgaria, and Tuesday, it's right, that was Tuesday morning, we're in the Varna town centre looking for coach station to, to take us to Istanbul and luckily we got one so then we got picked up in the night then in Varna it was like a uh, I'd say about 13 hours to travel from the Varna to Istanbul on the coach that was a laugh though even that I was going to say <laughs> the stories you hear the scouts yeah. just getting everywhere to the match and stuff that's it's it that's the, that's the route down yeah, yeah. so we're oh, Varna there oh, right yeah, Varna, yeah yeah I've been to Sofia once just through uh, with skiing actually I've been to Sofia but just uh, prison <laughs> 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 Right, got it. so the, 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 the thing with Bulgaria, they say like <coughs> Sofia is like the, the, you go outside. It's a bit like here in Britain, like it's London seems detached. They don't see Sofia as Bulgarian. They just see it as like like its own place, and then the rest of it's Bulgaria. It's a bit right. like a, a, mm. a, a complex towards Sofia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which probably because it's a capital, but yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And then so straight down through thirteen hours, yeah, straight into Istanbul, Istanbul yeah. yeah. So you get to Istanbul on the morning then of the final, is it? Got there in the night. Yeah, we got there about like four, four in the morning, and I just um, and that's how unplanned it was. They went looking for a hotel to get your head down in the morning, not unplanned, just there. Um, and then we, luckily we found and found an hotel. So just had a few hours there, and then you were up at like eight nine o'clock. We were right by the hotel where that far. It was from um, Taxim Square, so you could walk like twenty minutes back to the square after it. Brilliant. So it's, yeah, it's good. Like, and what was the day like before the final? Good, good, long enough. The they kicked off there about 11, 10, 11. So once you're, you're yeah, on the air, we actually won the European Cup on the 26th of yeah, 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 we won it the next day. It was long, but that boss, though, that's a laugh. That tag from Square was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just mayhem in there, yeah. <laughs> just boss, yeah. Just the, the whole like, atmosphere of it, and then like the, getting the, the bus up to the ground after it. And as soon as you hit to the ground, you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's the ground in the desert, but even that itself, like, just brilliant. Had a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you, um, I've got a terrible story about Istanbul. I, I was in the 80s in Bootle, and I got off at half time. <laughs> and I was just like, I got to my nan's house, and she was like, what are you doing home? It's 3-1. And I was like, oh, it doesn't matter, they're not going to win. Then I yeah. went to the toilet, and she went, it's 3-2. 
And I went, fuck this. And I ran back out and I, I was back in the pub then when it was 3 3. <laughs> I feel a bit of a shit fan. I got off, but um, you, you always wasn't one of them, was you? No, I can't remember that many getting off. I can remember kicking off, loads kicking off, because they had, um, they ran out of water and they had these little water cans they were selling for, selling for like a few quid. And it was literally like, it was like a little carton of like, one sip of water and we was just sweating and we were like you're messing you know what I mean can you get a pint can you get a bit of water I might get off myself now yeah. <laughs> oh, what God. a game though eh? what a game brilliant though. yeah yeah. one game that you'd wish you'd go back and just like replay it all yeah. just just mayhem just brilliant can you remember much of obviously you were drinking can you remember much so you leave the ground then obviously we know what yeah, happens there yeah I remember the, the, when we had to leave the ground I was back on the buses we, um, to Taxim Square but it was more like, I think it was just because what's happened, it takes you out of it, it was just chilled out then. It, yeah. That's probably the best part of it, that it was just a relaxed, just brilliant. There was never getting back, there was like, um, I was like Fenerbahce fans are all there, but they were brilliant. They were just made up just to uh, see Liverpool fans, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Plus you'd won. I mean, we just sat in, like there was a, a bar and like a cafe next door, we just sat in a cafe all night, just just chilling, chilling out. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. We were looking forward to getting going back to the hotel and just chilling out, just... You were just drained. You're like you played the match. You were emotional, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And dehydrated as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. So you stayed another night then in Istanbul, did you? Then? No, we, f- oh. we drove home that morning. We went back to the bus station and got the coach back home that morning. Tuvana. Tuvana, yeah. Tuvana, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's a few more days in Varna then. That that was brilliant though. Just like a, like a, like a lads' holiday then, and it's just every night just back out on the aisle, just. Brilliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you was there then? Ten. There was loads of Liverpool fans there, but there was ten of like, ten, ten of me and my close mates. Well, eight to ten, I think. Yeah. yeah. So then, the night before, you meant to fly home. That's yeah. Well, we'd always like we'd always go out for like a few like a few bevies, and then there was like a, a corner bar that had Euro sport. Every night you played the match, you go back and it's like the matches on against they want to make up dancing. <laughs> I remember, like, I remember watching that match and then, like, listen, I'm going home. If that, that can't, I, I need to, I was probably home sick, to be fair. I just want to get my head down. Um, went back, so I can't remember if someone was in the hotel, one of the lads, but I just, that's it, I went back to the room. Um, then drips and traps, like, my mates come back in the night. And then we went to the next morning, read to Pachton, got the, knocked, the police knocked on the door. And we were just like, you know, what's happened here? We didn't really know, nothing had kicked off. So like uh, I had no top on. I didn't know I had a red, to- a red t-shirt on, and he said, uh, "Put a white t-shirt on." I said, "All right." So I had to open my suitcase. And I had a pack, like I was like a shop. It was like a, a, a you had a pack of three t-shirts, and he seen me pull the white t-shirt out the pack, brand new, got the cardboard out the neck and everything, and put it on. He was like, hey, "Come with me." So as we were coming out, we made like, "What's happened?" I said, I "Don't know." So he just wants me for something. I said, "I'll be back soon." I think we were flying about. Four or five, this is about ten in the morning. So I thought I'd just go and just whatever. Just... So you just woke up in the morning, just was getting ready to pack your stuff, ready to go, was it? Got the bags packed and everything. And then the coppers just literally just knock on the hotel door, on yeah. The door, yeah. And she said to me, like, put a white t shirt. It was to me and my mate, <coughs> but they were quite the same build. And he said, You two put white t shirts on. So he said, All right, just put on in. As we got out, he stopped me, mate, went, No, no, just just you actually, just just your mate. And they were saying, Do you want us to come with you? And I was like, Not really. He said, It's I don't know what's happened, but it can't be that bad. I'll just go clear up, and then I'll be back later to get the flight on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get a bit of a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that it sounds dodgy now. Done it saying put a different t-shirt on, but at the time you mustn't have thought it another. Yeah. It was just naive. The mo- the main thing for me when I look back now and just think how f- how fucking naive is that? Like. Just even going with them, I should have just pulled, like, like, my cousin was there as well, and I should have just said, you come with me. Mm. Just, just, like, I don't know what's happened here, but I was just that naive, just like, <coughs> oh, I'll go with them, I'll be home, I'll get back to the hotel, I'll, I'll get picked up and I'll get home. Just not knowing, like, even when I was in the, the police car with them, and we drove down, and he stopped outside the place where the attack happened, and he jo- jumped out and was speaking to a woman, but it's just, I didn't comprehend it, it was just like, that, didn't even know what tact happened there. Jumped back in and he says, all right, we'll just go to the station. I said, yeah, no worries. But I weren't even handcuffed either, so there was no like, reason for me to feel like something's happened. I was just like, I was just clear this up or something. And I went to the police station and they still never put handcuffs on me. They just, um, they, they, in the main deception, they said, just just, just stand in the corner, just sit in the corner and like, we'll, we'll sort it all out soon. 
I said, all right, sound. And one by one, like, more like, lads were getting brought in who'd been nicked. And like, what, um, Liverpool fans? Liverpool fans, yeah, yeah. One was like directly across from me in the police station in like the entrance area. And he swapped him later with someone else. But it was getting like busy, like the police station, like the reception area. So like, uh, the translator then come up and said, uh, you know, gonna do like ID parade. I was like, great. Let's get, I can I be first off because I want to go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, all right, Sam, do you want to go first in? It's like, Sam, let me get in there. And at no, at no point now you know that you have I no idea what's, what's going on. What's going no, on here. I just, I just, I know, I, like, I was speaking to the lad, I, like, across, he'd said, oh, it was a kick off last night. And I'm thinking, well, I went fucking there. If I get put in an ID parade, I'm out of here, getting yeah, on yeah, that yeah. parade first. <clears throat> so then we went into the, the police, said, right, took me into a room. I was, like a, a, it was an office when it was basically someone's office and I looked and there was just like three Bulgarian lads next to me but I just looked and was like fucking hell mate they're like, all like, like this jumper on but like a blue mark and I'm still there in a white t-shirt and I was like this, this alright sad it is what it is I'll just get through it and get out of here and then uh, the first person to come in was like a woman and she was talking to him and the translator was and then she walked back out and a lad come in and pointed at me and the translator said, he said you were at the scene of the crime. I was like, I'm at the scene of the crime, you know what I mean? She said, what, what do you want to say for the record? I said, I went there. She said, so the woman who was in the first time come back in and pointed at me. And she was like, uh, she said you were at the scene of the crime. I said, listen, I went at the scene of the crime. What can I say? She said, what's your statement? I said, what can I say? I went there. <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? So... He said, all right, took me back to the, the reception. And then that's what the handcuffed me to the radiator then. And I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm not going home now, you know what I mean? It's, but I couldn't get sent out a translator. I couldn't, like, I couldn't get it. Like, she, she was just saying, they've, they've said that you're there. You, 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 you took to Vanna tomorrow to be, like, arrested for it. So I was like, all right, then it's... It is what it is. <laughs> when you're saying arrested for have they told you that? You hadn't, still hadn't told me what for, no. no. Oh, that's insane, that isn't it? Like, I guess as well. Like, I still think it's like a, a, a fight or something. So yeah, just a, it, yeah, just yeah, a, just a fight. I'm thinking, oh, it's, if it, if, even if they say I was there, it, I'll, I'll still be home. No, I mean, it's most, just a fight. Yeah, yeah it's, but also, I mean, you, it's easy for for me to listen to you now. Not, but I'm, what I mean is, it's you forget you're 18 at the time when this is yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not you know the naivety of it. In like at 18, in that situation, it's yeah. different than 30 odd year old fella or whatever. Yeah, if it happened now. I'd have enough in me to like <coughs> to, to, to just pull apart the, the ID parades and go on, go on, I'm, in a, I'm here with fucking three Evans. No, they're not going to yeah, point yeah. them out, are they? Yeah. So they've got the three same t shirts on. Plus, they weren't even a lawyer there. They should have been a lawyer at, at, on an ID parade. You still need legal, like, ripped. There's just no, like, like a, you know what ID parades are you see in a film and they align them all up when someone comes in and it's like 10 people all look the same. I was looking at that ID parade, it was like, this isn't right. <laughs> and I, was, I was in the police station reception where people were all walking past me. So they're walking past me in the middle of a, a police station. And then I'm on an ID parade. They're like, oh, yeah, he's familiar. You know, have just seen me in reception. So it's, it just didn't add up. It's all of it. Now you look back and you think, fuck, how did he get away with that? But yeah. You did. did you notice I'd, a kind of, um, when they handcuffed you to the, the radiator, did you notice a kind of, a switch in the in their attitudes where they've gone a bit, you know, you weren't handcuffed and it was all a bit, all right, mate, just come. Did it did it then go a bit turn a bit? No, it can't. It went. It, it, the, the, to be fair, the police station just empties out then, and I knew, like they said, you're here for the night. And I remember complaining because there was I was on the floor, it's like a, a, a marble floor, and there was a, a couch there, and I was saying, listen, give me the cushion off the couch. I'm, I'm my, my sides are hurting here. You're like, no, no, you, you can't have the cushion off the couch. And then a woman, the hotel rep, brought us food in. And uh, she said, can I come in and see them? The police said, yeah, yeah. And she came over like these little things of foil. And the policeman come over, grabbed it and took her away. I was like, fucking hell, there's no need for it, you know what I mean? It's just like, why are you being arsy about, like, about this? But uh, yeah, I, just, I was just praying then just to get out of it because my sides were killing. Just I couldn't get comfy. You can't sleep with your arm like, up on the radiator. So you're like, like, you're like in a cell floor. then or something? In, like, no, I'm, in the, I'm still in the main reception. Still handcuffed to still the handcuffed to the radiator. Like fucking yeah. un- inhuman, like yeah, just but I, I, then I was just led to the point like I just want to get out of here. Just 
do whatever they say. Yeah, yeah, just go along with it, just comply. Just Mate, I, and also, if you know, if you know you haven't done anything, then yeah. there's yeah. no reason to not go along to with. Be suspicious. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, you it know. reminds me of that. Uh, now, now is it now they see us? The one where the, the yeah, six or seven on black the Netflix. Kids, yeah, yeah. 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 In Central Park, it's it sounds like that story yeah. where they just grab people and go, "Yeah, you say you, say you've done this." Thing, yeah. Thing. I think it always got me suspicious of the girl who come in for the ID parade and then and went out and come back in. And I remember thinking at the time, that's that's not right. You know what I mean? Why is a, a witness coming in, arguing with them and then going back out and come and it's like they're going back out and they're like, no, no, that lad in the t-shirt, that's what you need to point at. And I was just come back in and I was just that, that's like a, a little switch was in my head, like you can't get away with that, surely, you know. But it, again I thought it was just like like a fight or something. But she's just saying I was at the sea and it's, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get out. I'll have to, my mum and dad to kick off because I have to do another flight home, but it is what it is, I'll get home. <laughs> okay. So you, you spend the whole night handcuffed in, like, the police reception, like, the next morning then? Have, have you rang home at this point or anything? No, no. The rep said to me, your cousin stay behind. Um, just to, uh, just to try and, like, like, come home with you the next day or something like that. And if you got talked to... Uh, well, sorry, so your cousin had come to the police station now as well? He would have been, they never allowed him in. They wouldn't let him in. He, he was outside. She said, like, your cousin's outside. He stayed, he's missed his flight. He stayed here just to try and, like, like help stay. the situation. Yeah, to try and help the situation. But then the next day, we got took to uh, Varna Detention Centre. And then um, that's, that went up there. And it, it was, we just got split. It was three of us. Then just got split up. Then I was in a cell. That, that's when I got put into a cell. With uh, three Bulgarians, oh, two Bulgarians at that time, yeah, in a detention centre. That was fun. Just can't <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> like, but the one could speak like okay English, and he kept saying like um, "ira." Like, what the fuck is he on about? I was like, "What?" And he had like a book, but it's their language is Slovak, and I was like, "I don't even know what that is, mate." And he's going "ira, ira." Like, I don't know. He's going terrorism. I said, "Oh, I are yeah, yeah, book on I are as if to read it." I said, "It's fucking be Bulgarian." <laughs> what do you do with the book? No, what you mean? But he's trying to be helpful, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus, I can't keep thinking, mate. That you're eighteen at this point. I yeah, fuck me, yeah. man. That's that, mm. it's scary, that isn't it? You forget how young you are as well at eighteen yeah. as well. Like, yeah, like you're naive. At yeah, you really are. are. You're really naive. And I'm, I'm still, you're not, you're not knowing the severity of what's happened. That I day. think it was, I was don't know, I can't remember it. But it was that day we went to the detention centre, or like a day later. The, the detention centre doubled up. It was like a police headquarters, so all the investigations were there. So we never getting tucked down from the cell because all the, the cells were on the top floor, and um, it, there was the woman who was at this seeing the crime originally, and, and the found out her name was Sylvia. She was the lead investigator. And um, there was like a, a, she said, this is like your, your lawyer, you've been a scientist, it's a scientist. The lawyer was saying, just say none. I was like, no, I need to, I need to. she was like, do you, do you want to give away in a statement? I said, fucking yeah, here's what I was doing like, like last night. Okay, um, she was like, and then I just talked them through it all. They were like, well, they're saying you're at the scene of the crime. So they can't have been at the scene of the crime. I was at the hotel. So they're then saying, like, all right, go and get the, the register from the card going in, in the door. You'll see the, the door, like, it registers, because we kept having trouble with the card going down, getting it replaced, because we knew it worked. And I, was, and I was saying, go and get the CCTV at the hotel. And she was just, and she was just ignoring it and was just like, well, you've been pointed as being at the scene of the crime, you're going to get charged, blah, blah, blah. And then that was it, just back up in the, the cell. The kind of went like that for, like, about a week going downstairs and they kept asking me do you want to admit what you've done and I was like I've, you've got me statement you know what I mean I was I was I was went out with my mates they'll all say I, that's what I've done and then I went back to the hotel with my mates and then went you know, went, to, went to bed I said go and get the CCTV and the, the card will always corroborate this and they, they just weren't interested in that they always said if do you want to admit what you've done and after about the fifth time went down it was a bit like um, it looked like, you know, like a stone that you see outside people's drives, so people parking on the side, it was like that. And it was in like a white, uh, just a white shopping bag. And the lawyer was like, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Your parents, your parents are on the way over. I was like, all right, so and, um, he said, just don't say nothing. And the, the investigator said, that's what you used. I was like, I've never seen that in my life, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was, what are you on about? She said, that's what you used in the fight. I was like, I don't even know what that is, you know what I mean? It's... Then, all right, back upstairs in the cell. It just it kept doing that until I went to 
we first bailed here and, and it was there. My dad weren't there then. The lads who I was with, his brother was there. I remember like going in the courtroom and just seeing the press and was like, fuck, what's this? I, just, it just, I thought it was for someone else until we were getting stuck in the courtroom and it was just the loads of press. And that like kind of made me think, shit, like this bit of a big story, this over here, fuck's this? What is in the press? Is in the like Bulgarian press or the, the Bulgarian press? press. Or, or? Bulgarian press, and then um, and had you spoke to your mum and paid like it? I hadn't, no, I hadn't spoken to them by then. You still hadn't oh, spoken to no, them? I couldn't use the phone. No, so I hadn't. I hadn't probably so dad was, of... I think my dad was getting out there that day. This is about four days in. I think was the he come out. He was struggling to get the flights out. Him and, and my uncle come out. Was he there? I don't know whether he was. Oh, but I seen him that day. And I, I think he was arriving that day, and then because that was like a day where I didn't know what was happening. I, did, I didn't get told it was a bail here, and, and I went up to like the the the, the, the docker, and uh, I just heard a translator in my ear. I was like, all right, blah blah blah. And I was like, I don't even know what this is. She was like, well, you, you did you got to read the charges? I was like, okay, and I just heard attempted murder, uh, life to life, no parole. And I was like, what? You fucking mess. Uh, but I, did, I I thought. That's what I'd been given mistakenly because I, she she weren't the best translator. I was looking at her and going, "What have you just said?" <laughs> she was like, "Wait, wait." I, she's like, "Yeah, okay, that go and sit down now." So I was sitting down, and the lad said to me, "I'm sure it's been given ten years." I said, "I've given life <laughs> now. What's happened here?" You know what I mean? We went till we got God. back to <laughs> the detention centre. At the my dad and the lawyer that were there, and they were like, "The lawyer was like, no, that was just bail. That's actually charges. That's what you're facing." I was like, "Fuck, what's?" the fuck's happened to you so then it's it, I've, I've started figuring out then alright this is fucking serious this you know what I mean it's not going home anytime soon Jesus and before those four or five days after after um, you got arrested and you were going back and forth up and down did you um, what was that like what was that like was it was it in, as inhumane as a, a handcuff on the radiator or was it like a the nor- cells looking back I at the first time I went in, I, I just shit myself and was like, it, 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 the detention centre of what a Bulgarian jail you'd think it is. <laughs> it's, it, you picture it in your mind and you see the detention centre and you think, oh, the, 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 the smell was just terrific. It was, it was three beds and then it was, there was like a little like metre wall for the toilet round the corner and the, the, the toilet to hold on the floor. And I was just like, fucking hell, <laughs> it's not used to this, you know what I mean? But... You, you kind of just get used to it. I mean, one of the fellas, I, I didn't realise, but it was his own little telly, like a, a little, like the half the size of an iPad, but it was quite big, back bulky. So he'd have like a, like he'd always like put the football on and all that. He was quite like, I think he was, he was about 40, he was quite sympathetic to like an 18 year old being in the cell. Like no one spoke the language. I like had the, the food to get past the door and I was just looking at the food going, I can't fucking eat this. It's, I just went even, I, went, I didn't want to eat it anyway because, I was just depressed. I just didn't want to know. But he was kind of like, he kind of knew and just just like left you to it. You know what I mean? Mm. And my dad come over and brought like letters from from like my family and my cousins and all that. And then we just opened a letter and I was just like crying. I was like, I can't fucking read this. You know what I mean? Because mm. they they half knew the severity anyway because they've been <clears> reported back that someone had nearly died. So they knew, like, it, it was quite severe. Yeah. So they were like, I was reading the letters and they're like, fuck, I just couldn't even read them, just putting them down. But it's, was it scary to? I always think of one of my favourite films, Shawshank Redemption. You think of that first night in the cell, like you don't sleep. You, 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 the first few like we can remember just not sleeping. And like, what is in like fear of like just what? just like the just strange situation I was in, just like how the fuck am I in prison here? Just trying to you trying to make sense of it. So you're trying to put all the pieces together. All right, so this is what they're saying I was doing. And, and uh, to, I've got witnesses to, to say I weren't there. But what I, I was just trying to... Because I weren't being like, sat down and told this is what it is, you're trying to just fill a blank in yourself. And it was just up all night, just stressing out. And But it was just... Because conti- it was in the cell for 24 hours a day, it was just continuous. It was just like having a breakdown going, what the fuck's happened here? But, and what, are you, you're emotional. You cry, you're crying all the time. You're like... Uh, no, more just... I don't know, you're more just waiting on like tender hooks, like, you, you're just waiting for the door to go, when the door goes, you're open, this is like, this this, this, this like a lawyer or my dad go like this, just to get out of the cell or something, and then like, it's mail for someone, or like it's, it's a, the library, or it's food, and you're like, fucking hell, so it's, 
It's just a nightmare can see yeah, 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 yeah. I know I know you didn't know obviously during those four days or however long before the I was the, in the detention centre for a month. Fucking hell, were for you? A month, uh, but but what I was gonna say, what I was gonna no, ask you was Yeah, about a month, yeah. I didn't wanna leave. <laughs> I, I remember we, we we got a lawyer. With the first lawyer my dad got was um he'd been recommended from from someone over here, he was a human rights lawyer. And he was quite good to be fair. But he just turned around to my dad and said, Listen, this is I'll help you. I'll do everything I can, but there's a lawyer in Vana who you need for these types of situations. So we kind of knew what he was getting at there, like, it's just to try and, like, make life a bit easier for yourselves, go and get this lawyer, because he'll, like, he'll grease palms, basically. And right. as soon as, I, like, not, it kind of, like, guides us as, as to what to do. So as soon as I got this lawyer, he come to see me in the detention centre, and she, Bobby, Bobby Shalaskoff, his name was, and he's like, pack your bags, you're going to the prison. I was like, I don't fucking want to go to the prison. He was like, no, no, you're going to find the prison today. I was like, no, listen, I'm fine upstairs. I'm yellow. I had not a shower for weeks. And seeing out, outside, like, just get him. And he was like, my dad was like, listen, you need to get out of here. You're going you're gonna to die in here. And I was like, no, no, because I was safe, I didn't want to go. I was like, I'm fine here. I've got this sound. I've got the, the lads of sound upstairs. I'm staying. And they were like, you're going today. So then I think he'd sorted, like, he'd, he'd gone in and said, get him to the prison, get him out of here. Because my dad was saying, you just weren't looking good. You were looking Had you terrible. not been charged at this point, though? You're still kind of waiting I've been for the... charged. Yeah, I'd been charged when I first went for bail. That's when like, I was properly formally charged for, yeah, in the court. So I, I kind of knew then what, I was, what, what the situation was. And was that, was when, when you were charged... Um, was that for, sorry four days after you got arrested about that four or five, four or five. Days, yeah, and so yeah. was that story built was the story of what's happening to you building in the UK by that point or was it I, so I couldn't tell about the UK over there it was it was I never heard my name on the news over there and like the little box telly I was like oh shit that's national news that so I kind of knew it was big then mm. and I waited until I then got to the prison which had a, a, like a, a decent telly like a, a normal telly should I say in the cell you kind of knew them. It was on the news, couldn't sing, like, all the time. I was like, what, this? And then every time I go to, um, I went to court for another, they tried again for bail, and it was more press. So we kind of knew then it was quite big, and then they see the newspapers over there, you see your face in the newspapers. But then you just, like, it, it's always been like, um, like, Michael Shields hooligan, and you're like, oh, fucking hell. Like, I could kick to the teeth, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you just heard them too. Like, you couldn't understand what he was saying. And then they were just like, Michael Shields, Hooligansky. And I was like, oh, no, not that. It's Jesus. Just, yeah. Because I can imagine if you're... Because if I was in your position and I'm lack, I haven't got any sleep, I'm in a weird country, you're doing the rounds in your head. Like, did I even do... Like, did I do... Like, yeah, you're you convincing yeah. yourself, like, I think, maybe maybe I did. Yeah. Like, w- was that... I, no, the, the funny... The, the weird thing I always look back on is my dreams. I'd have, like, the most realistic dreams that I was back home. And I'd wake up and I was like, oh, no. Like, I'd be like, just a normal dream. Like, my mum's calling me off for work or get out of bed or something, you... And like I'd, I'd come down and I'd, someone would wake me up and I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, fucking hell, not this. Yeah, just... It, it does, you, you start playing, like, tricks on your mind mm. and you, it's just making sense of it. Like, it's... You're still, like, naive thinking, all right, I, I, we'll go to trial. Because I know I weren't there, because I know I've never done it, I'll be walking out, it's fine. So it's it's always like... It went to the trial that, like, I kind of just snapped me out of it and was like... It, I, I turned completely away from all the legal stuff and just went, I'm, I'm in prison, I'm doing what I'm doing, and I don't want to know what's happening outside. I've just, I, I'll, I'll deal with this in here now. That's it. So, so how long was the detention centre and then you got moved to a prison? How long had you done days. until it got to a point in court where it was like, bang, this is you now? About two months. Two months. After two, the trial was three days. So for kind of two months though, you're thinking? I just in limbo. In limbo, yeah. Yeah. I just waited to go. I'm not waiting to go home. But well, like hoping, like expecting to go on basically. Honestly, Mike, I've from when I, I told it, I didn't. I haven't told many people I was speaking to you today because I've been like, it's, it's like excited to kind of it'd be nice for people to hear your story. Everyone I spoke to went, such a nice fella, such a nice lad, <laughs> yeah. fucking hell. Which makes it feeds into the story even more. How like it is just naive. And if you're yeah for them two yeah. months, I'd be personally thinking if you know you weren't there and you know that everyone knows you're a nice lad. You'd just be thinking, this is fucking someone yeah. in the minutes is going to go, obviously, it's yeah. fucking not him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you, you're kind of waiting for that. You're waiting for like that day where like you just sense coming. Someone, co- yeah, yeah, someone yeah, yeah. wakes up and goes, "We've dropped a bollock here." You know, it's fucking hell. It's it, it's obviously not it's him. Clearly not <clears> him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's o- over those two months. Did you kind of get any wind of you know like the corruption side of things? You know what you said about like the t- and getting you to put a different t-shirt on. Did you start to think? Hang on, this is fucking- yeah, yeah. I think once you, the more you put in the like system as well the more you're within like the how the like structure works the more you just think like I, 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 I once that trial it's an and the verge to come I just turn around to me dad and was like don't even let's just not even appeal this let's just go it's just you're not gonna win you you, you can't you cannot win here you, you can give them a white piece of paper they'll argue it's black to, to you know what I mean that you can't beat them you just <laughs> Do you remember much about that court day? Because again, it, I'm like kind of <sighs> in, in, in my head, like the kind of drama of it. Like you know, you see an, an American court and you're waiting for this kind of guilty or not guilty thing, and it's like, was it as kind of as you'd yeah, imagine like that? Yeah, I think we kind of knew that it was going to be guilty because I'd have spoke to my dad on the morning of it, and my dad was like, "Listen, just keep your heads up." Look the judge in the eye and tell him to fuck off. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he knew, he knew, we knew it was it was going to be a guilty. And I said, listen, uh, that said, it is what it is. We, we were all, at that time, the one who, the lad who'd done it had already made a statement. So we were kind of like, this is going to be all Admitted it. Admitted it. He'd already submitted a statement that, not that he'd submitted a, to a statement to a lawyer over here. So we kind of, that filtered day, filtered to me the second day of the trial. The third day was the sentence. So the third day, my dad said, like, they're going to give you guilty, but he's already admitted to it. Um, we're going to get you out, basically. Just tell them to fuck off. So when that judge was, like, giving me, I was never looking at it, I couldn't even tell to fuck off because I just there 15 years and was like, oh, no. I don't, I don't, hang on. How can they give you 15 years if someone else has admitted it, though? Well, I think their argument was it never been... A, we, we couldn't admit it to the case because it was, it was like they couldn't put the new evidence in because it's all been summoned up. And he never... He went in a, he went in a courtroom to say... They wanted him in that courtroom to say he'd done that. So it's it, to them, they weren't even evidence. They never even looked at it. They never even made the press over there. It was over back home. It was quite big over mm. there. I remember <laughs> watching the news and it was just nothing. And I was saying to me, seven mates, someone's just admitted to this today. And oh they were like, fucking hell. <laughs> my heart's breaking here in that. Yeah. Me. I did, they couldn't believe it because it just weren't even in the paper. It was nothing there. And they were was like saying, someone has admitted to it today in England. And they were just like, why are you here? I was like, can you tell me? <laughs> and they were just that narrow-minded just Fuck. because they wanted to get a conviction to then, because that's all they're after. Yeah. I, it's funny, legal system, I say funny, it's fucking up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> a civil case can run alongside a criminal case. Like over here, if you if someone gets found guilty, then then they can be sued. But over there, they were sued, the, the victim was suing me alongside the the criminal case. So we kind of had two prosecutions. I was fighting two battles, basically. So I had like f- I had four, two state prosecutors and two private prosecutors against me. So it was just it was just always an uphill battle. So every time like I put a witness forward, it was just getting hammered by four people. And I was like, fucking hell, it's... Even in my mind, I'm thinking, it's just money. All of it's just money. Like, if, if you've been attacked, and I, I don't know if my heart goes out to him because it was fucking horrific what happened to him. But your, your first thing should be to see justice being done and then you get your, your rightful compensation. You shouldn't straight away be looking at the person who, you know, presumed it, like, guilty but still innocent. I want the money now. This shouldn't be allowed, you know what I mean? Mm. But that's... When that's happening, you kind of, like, you, you see why it's happening. Like, it's, mm. it's just money. Everything goes... And people in the prison used to say it to me as well, you just get them... You're just a cash cow, that's all you are. Just pay the money and go home. So, it's, so did you, how much did he... Did he, he got £80,000 off the off us. The judge said I couldn't be transferred until we paid £80,000. You, you had to pay eighty grand. You had to fundraise eighty eighty grand, yeah. yeah. To pay, yeah. Fuck. So what, what are you... Can I just can I just ask? So, what what during the court? What did they exactly say happened? Because it was was it Martin Gorg Gorg yeah. George F. Sorry, yeah, George I can't be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he tried to break up a fight. And another lad had gone up and hit him. And then the, the, the lad who, who, I think he's gone to the ground and then the other lad who's, who's picked the brick up and dropped it. He's dropped it all through on his head. 
Now, when you see it, I seen him in court and I, my heart just sank because he had like a horseshoe, horseshoe scar and like a dent in his head. I was just never thinking, fucking hell, mate, how's he even alive? You know mm. what I mean? Like, thank God he's alive, but it's horrific what he's done to him. You know what I mean? That, it's, that, 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 it's, yeah, it's so this guy, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, mm. it's terrible. Yeah, it is right on the side, yeah. yeah. But he sat like, like where he is away from me in the trial. So he sat with his prosecution team. So I was talking to him in the trial. That's really? Fucking, yeah, and I'm just saying to him, listen, you know you've got the wrong person here. And like, as he's, and, and he's, he, he was saying, like, I, I don't speak English. I was like, you must speak English because you're working the tourist part. <laughs> you know what I mean? In a bar. I know, I, he spoke English. In a, and I yeah. kept saying, talking to him in English, listen, you know you've got the wrong person for this. And he was just, just ignoring me. Yeah. He's, he's probably just saying, I need, I'm getting money here. So fuck. Yeah, I think from what I was told over there, he woke up in the hospital and just said, what happened? <clears throat> and the doctor's just like, give him a newspaper with my fucking big head on the front and said, he's done that to you. So he's just thought, all right. So, but then he picked me up with a witness statement as well after seeing, after waking up and being given a newspaper. So all of it was just, yeah. just... Just yeah. all set, and and they, and they and they didn't bring in during the trial. They didn't bring any CCTV. No, no nothing like no that. Forensic, no forensic, nothing. Well, I was telling because even the, the <clears throat> stone itself was like a, a like a chalky stone. So I was trying to like like tell the investigator how basically how to do your job. Listen, if someone picks that stone up, but the first thing they're gonna do is do that on themselves. Is go and get me t-shirt. The policeman saw. We take the t-shirt out the pack, so I kind of been wearing that t-shirt. You've got my suitcase. Go and have a look for it. Go and get the CCTV. Uh, the CCTV was a big one because it just was it straight away showed me going back to the hotel. Mm. And the, the the card the card reader on the doors can be argued against because anyone can have that card. Of but course, CCTV is a big one. Yeah. So I just kept saying to them, "You need the CCTV," but I, we just couldn't. I don't know whether my lawyers couldn't get it or they just didn't want to know that the investigators. Just weren't interested. And you just think, just all I need is just a just fucking that. seat, just yeah. some a camera, fucking yeah. so surely. Yeah. Even if it's not just the hotel, like like well, like surely a, a street seat, street or a bar. It's it the type of place where it is. It's not like it's it, it's not like a, uh, you come like around town and you see a CCTV. It's not that type of place. But mm. bars themselves would have their own CCTV, which would show me walking mm. back up to an hotel, surely, or just. But the hotel did have CCTV, so it, they should have got it. But they just, they never, they never looked. You know, those for those two months before the trial, then, is this costing you money, your family money, flying out? Flying back in and out, yeah, is yeah, yeah. yeah. Kills them. Was there, like, kind of, like you say, um, fundraising things going yeah, on and stuff they then? Yeah, constantly fundraising. They were, they were lucky, to be fair. Um, they fundraised outside the grant, outside Anfield and, and raised all kinds. I mean, my mates took buckets on Everton coaches and, and raised all kinds of money, so... We done well in, in that respect, and it paid for the legal fees as well. Because even though it was Bulgarian, it's poor country. As soon as the lawyer finds out you're English, oh, that's ten grand. You're like fucking hell. Because yeah. you just got to pay. You know what I mean? It just kills yourself to do it, but you've got to pay. It. And then you'd have to fundraise to pay that fella as well. To pay to pay him, yeah, yeah, yeah. It cost a few quid. Jesus, fuck me, man. Mate, that um, iconic. That I, I say iconic. I don't mean to, but um, that photo where. Um, I think yeah, that one which which um, people can see if they watch on YouTube was that the only reason I'm bringing this up because it, this is the photo I think that if I saw I certainly remember it from either this photo here or that photo there mm. was that during the um, when all the press were about and yeah I think that's probably Jordan Bale no yeah. that's Jordan that's Jordan the verdict you see the fucking big gobsmack face that's when I've just been given fifteen yeah what what yeah. was that feeling mate when you, like you can't, like you say, for those two months, you're thinking someone's gonna fucking see common sense in a minute, and then when it's like actually, you got I don't know. Years. I don't know. I, the, there was a, a lad who was in the Bulgarian prison, spoke good English, and he, to be fair, he was brilliant. He just because I, I went down and that fucking head was up my ass, and like he come in and he's just saying to me, "Listen, you're young enough to get through this. You're young enough. You're fine." He said, "Look at me, I'm 40 or 18." And I was like, "All right." It's, Perspectives needed there, you know what I mean? It's and then with B A T in the dune, and I was like happy out when I'm thirty three, and I was like fucking hell, mate. <laughs> yeah. Horrible, yeah. But he was just saying, you've got appeals, don't worry. It's it, it isn't cut and dried, and listen, you, you can only change, you can only do what you can do. What can you do? We go to the gym today, sad. We go to the gym tomorrow, sad. 
don't if you just kept saying don't think too far ahead just day by day by day by day get your family over for a visit see them make, make sure they see you're all right so he was he kind of like the first few weeks just coach me through it and then it's you start like it's like a rhythm prison you just get into like a, a, a rhythm of just like get up same same shit every day it's it is but it's once you get into a, a rhythm of it, you just accept it, and it's just you just kind of look and go, "I'm not going nowhere." It's I can sit there and fucking cry. I can sit there and moan and bitch and then do like fellas' heads in in the cell, or just crack on. Just, just it is what it is. It's just when we ring my dad up, bring a few bucks over. Let's 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 just start working through this now. It is what it is. Did you start oh, looking at any? I think I feel like I if I was in your position, I would try and start looking of ways that you hear about people certainly on some like documentaries who start going through like deposition you know like the case thing and yeah, breaking it down and, and trying to I, pick I, out things you know because you've got so much time on your hands yeah you can you do that the first even just like the building up to the trial and you're constantly like asking people for advice you're doing the reds in you're like what do you reckon about this what do you reckon about it? in the end i just i just turned around and i said to, to my dad and all that listen you come on visits don't talk legal I'm not asked pay lawyers for that that's what they're for I don't want to know I, and I, I don't want to know witness statements who's admitted who's, who's said this I don't want to know I just when you come on visits speak about the family how's everyone getting on and the reds that, that's, I don't want to know about it I just blanked it out because you find that you just end up in a hole and you're just yeah, trying to make sense it. out of it yeah it just consumes you so but just in the end I just thought it's, it's not getting me nowhere the, the lawyers are the ones who are arguing it. They've got all the statements. They've got all the facts. Let them deal with it. So just, just then, just get a routine. Just get a routine into prison. That prison then was it different than what was worse? The detention centre that you were in, or the actual detention centre was the worst one. It's just because um, you just don't like change when you're in prisons. You get settled, and change is unsettling. You just don't want to go through it all. Mm. So once I got settled there. I was happy. Despite how horrendous it was, you would you you get used to it. You, you'd be surprised. You'd, you'd just be surprised. You just people are coming for visits and cousins and be like, "Fuck it, out, what's this?" And I'm like, "It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it." But uh, it just <clears throat> you just adapt. It, 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 you're in there. What's the point in crying? It's it could be worse. That's what I would say to myself. It could be worse. It's it's it could that the situations in there. I mean. The wing I was on was was actually all right, to be fair. It was, it was separated to like three floors. So the ground floor had like two, like, um, they were kind of like life no parole wings. They were just people that just in cages. Just, you don't go near them wings. The middle floors, which we were on, were all right. And the top floors were the gypsy floors. So in my head, I was just like, I'm not on the gypsy floor. That's a blessing. Because... <laughs> It was kind of, ours were like cells. You had like uh, six to eight in a cell. The gypsies are just open rooms. You got like 300 people in the room. Fucking and like, they were like, listen, it's no one showers. You said, it, they don't sleep. They're up all night. It's, you don't want, it's just, you're never, it's just hard work. Don't go up there. But you kind of felt sorry for them because they were like, they were just like second class citizens. The Bulgarians had all the good wings and we were all right. We were like, well, got the gym time, fine and all that. Like the hospital wing was on ours, so you had to edit. He just walked to the hospital wing, knock and say paracetamol, yeah. But the gypsies were just locked away. They went in and like they just like brought the food up to the wing, just left them to their own devices. And you, you were just, I was back below them. You all night, you're like, fucking, I have like a party up there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, just wild. <laughs> like we're all like normal down here, but like trying to read and they're just upstairs, just. This the, lad, the lads in your cell, like six to eight, that you're getting on with them, like when you yeah you, yeah you speak English and stuff and broken uh, a few of them a, a lot more people like it's it's embarrassing because you're trying like they can speak English you don't know where to their language so in the end I just picked like I, I dedicated to like like learning their language and then once you start like conversing a little bit they open up a bit to you then they're not like they're, they're happy to see you like try you know what I mean it's you can see you're having a go, even if the, the, the language isn't the best. At least they're sitting there going, Look at he's having a go, he's, he's trying, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, like, I it, suppose they're on your team. You're you're on the same team, aren't you? It's, even it's, Everyone's just in the sea, you're in prison together, you're in the same boat. Yeah. There's no like, it's not as if they're looking at me going, fucking hooligan coming over here and all that. 
they're not asked. No did one's not, that I even. Gonna, I was going to ask that. Did they not, not kind of see it on the news and think he's fucking killed a fucking? Not lot, really. Lot, they're not asked, and because in the prisons, even like the the the, the ones who do, who, like, especially when they come back over here, people know you're innocent. They know it, but they're not bothered. <laughs> it's well, why should they? But everyone's got their own problems. It's kind of like well, mm. everyone's not just like everyone's innocent, but do you, do you, did you almost get bored? Not bored, but like you know, saying. It wasn't me, you know, because like, yeah. like you say, no one's, yeah. no one's asked yeah. about it almost, are they? I, to be fair, you don't really speak about like your cases in prison. It's 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 mad that the place that you go for the crimes, no one talks about it. So it's it's not it's, it's not like it's taboo, but they just they, they know what they're all in for. Why do you want to bring it up? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it is what it is. No one can be asked. We we'll talk about different things instead. So. We'll talk about what's on the telly. Premier, the Premier League football was always on the Saturday, so they were quite happy coming to me and were like, they haven't got a clue about like, the Premier League. So they, they were all gambling. They were like, who's going to win this? And it was like, all right, Sands, it's we'll watch you with the footy now, you know what I mean? But it's, and would you not meet at any point, you know, Liverpool have just won the European Cup, you know, there's a fucking parade going on, there's a fucking lad back home who's admitted it. Was there no bitterness and anger there? Initially? There was, there was. But then it's even that, it's like a switch in your head. It's just not going to get you nowhere. It's, I can sit there and be fuming about it. I can sit there and like bite people's heads off on visits. But it's, it, it doesn't change the fact that I'm in prison for that crime. Mm. That, that's, that's my problem. That's, that's, that, that's, that's fine. It's, I've just got to... I can't change that fact that he's out and I'm, I'm, I'm away. But I can change what my day-to-day routine is in prison. So that, in the end, people are like, can I allow you to get through that? Well... You, you don't get through it, you just have to go, you just have to do it, don't you? It is. Yeah, you yeah. can't cry, you, you cry, they're not going to go, oh, look, he's crying that amount. That's just not going to work. <laughs> so did it's, you kind of stop the crying and that then almost? You know, you kind of, I, I didn't want, I, I did like the first few days in like, the detention centre, it was kind of, my head up my ass. but once like, you, you just accept it, it's fine. I mean, people that come and visit and go, can I not even ask? I go, of course I'm asked, but, yeah, what can I do? What yeah, can I, do? Yeah. I can't. I can't change this. It's 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 happened. I can't very do very it. mature as well yeah. like, to do that at eighteen and not <laughs> think like to not get frustrated at like the system or just mm. to start like like you said doing your own head in or doing other people's heads in and just to to think. I mean, you said the statement like it is what it is. Like, what can I? I mean, that that is a crazy statement to say yeah. that you've just been done for attempted murder. Um, for fif- got 15 years and then you go it is what it is but <laughs> like Tom <laughs> yeah. said there though you know the maturity I didn't happen in your in your life before no. to make you because I, I always only say that because I always talk about people say to me oh you got blown up you recovered well and I always say well I lost my mum when I was 12 that yeah. fucking was worse not so going to be worse than that that gave me the resilience to I didn't happen to you when no. you were growing up no funny enough he would have said to me like the 10 of us who went away this is what's going to happen like it's gonna happen to him they would be like don't let that happen to him <laughs> anyone could do it but don't let him do it he's a fucking mummy's boy don't let him do it it'll kill him but I don't know it's it's I, mad how then you became so resilient you know to it's you can't it's I don't know it's if it's the more like the fear once if there's it's like they're saying there's nothing to fear but fear itself once you, you can't get worse than walking into a prison and thinking like I don't know what's gonna happen here like Am I an enemy? Am I, am I going to be safe? It's fucking out of Bulgarian prison. It's got every fucking stereotype there is. But once like, you, you get into like the, the routine and you realise it's just a prison. It's it's just it's shit. It stinks. I'm shitting in a hole on the floor. But it's but it's it, it is what it is. It, mm. This is as bad as it gets. It's, it can't get worse than this. And you, you, you're dealing with it. So just live, live with it. Just deal with it. And are you. You're in like you're having fights, and did you ever have a fight or anything no, like that? Or? No, it's it's the, the the prison's over there because it went until I got back to England. That I've seen like it's just two different systems. The prisons over there are very like relaxed. People tend not to kick off because the guards. As, there was like a few fights there, but if you kick off and you disrupt the guards, they give you that such of a good garden, you're not going to do it again. And the, the guards say, the, the, you kick off outside, there's a fella in a towel with a gun. Why are you going to kick off then? You know what I mean? It's Was you ever on the receiving end of a, any guards giving you like, rough no, treatment and that? No, I, I think when that picture day when I first got the 15, I kicked off, getting put back in the van, and I had, uh, there was one who was just kicking me, and I, I, 
like I said, I'd try to kick him back and just end up getting fucking volleyed everywhere by him. But apart from that, the guards in the prison, they were, they were fine. There was one, I had a, it was a bit of a dickhead. And, um, and I made the mistake of like being on a, a visit with the family in town. And he, I said, he's a fucking dickhead. And he's always talking or something. And I should have said it though, because then we, I know like the parents, my we, dad went away and it's on his mind. And mm. he's, there's a guy in there giving him a tr- like, trouble. So I should have just kept it to myself. I should have just said like, just, just accept it you know what I mean he's a, he's a dickhead he's a dickhead leave him but then it's then he made a complaint to the lieutenant the lieutenant just went what do you want us to do it's, he's in prison you know what I mean if for him to sack the guard he's in prison he, he, just tell him to shut up liver so we kind of come back on me and I was like listen I didn't even complain about him it's I'm fine with him you know what I mean it's, I don't know it's there's like an un, not an understanding but like I said why would you kick off you're still in prison once you kicked off. Mm. It mm. doesn't change nothing. It just makes your life harder. So we just. How, how, are, you, how are your family coping with this? Because I, I, again, <sighs> I always bring it back to my situation. But like, for me, mate, it was easy in the sense that I was in a coma for two weeks. I was fucking hospital for three months. So I'm like, a bit like you, it's, you're just fucking dealing with it where yeah. my dad's sitting there watching me in a coma yeah, for two weeks. Yeah. You know, your family are at home thinking, yeah, worrying can... every fucking what's going on. I think my dad struggled at the beginning. I mean, fucking hell. I've got my own kids now. And I couldn't imagine going to like a place like that to see my kids. It would probably kill me then. I'd, I'd be, I'd be like when my dad was. So I, yeah. I mean, mum, they took a bad initially, but I think once they like got out and seen that I was, I was all right. He's fine. He could kind of like, not like he could kind of like put that worry to bed and just worry about the case. Mm. Like, it weren't, it weren't like two worries of oh he's in prison fighting this charge and he's in a prison which is a bad place. Once they got in the prison and was seen. Like, I think first when he come in, he kind of was like, he was upset because it, it's a shithole and it stinks. And like, the, the, the gypsies on the top floor are fucking screaming and everything. And he, my dad's like, what's this? this? This is like a zoo. He said, should we get you moved to a different place? And I said, don't move me, I'm fine. I'm all right here. I'd rather be here than anywhere else. Just just keep it as it is. Let's not rock the boat, you know what I mean? I went, got to, to Sophia for an appeal. And I was on the, and I was going in, and it was like a foreigner's wing, and I walked in, and I seen a lad who was in van, a bit like an Armenian, I was talking to him, and he said, "Oh, you staying in Sofia now?" I said, Fuck, "I'm going back to van." <laughs> He's like, "Why?" I said, "I'm, I'm just comfy." And he, but the trip was like a horrendous to go from van to Sofia, and he was like, "Why would you want to do that trip again?" I said, "Because I know once I get back to van, I'm fine. Mm. I, can, I can live with that. I don't want to start all this process. I'm happy to come for an appeal." But I want to go back to van. It's like a f- new day at school, like meeting all like you know. You yeah. don't know you're gonna yeah. meet in yeah. that. Exercise yards. You're walking around the yards on your own, and you, you, it's just paranoia. When you yeah. first go, it's paranoia. And you're like, oh, what the fuck is this? So I, instead of doing it all again, I just went, no, I'm going back to van where I know I'm fine. My dad, when that was like saying to me, stay in Sofia. It's 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 a better like prison, a nicer prison and stuff. Sorry, and like a nicer prison. Is that why they wanted you to stay there? Kind of because it was by the consulate, so the consulate could come in and see me. The embassy, but I thought yeah. the embassy were fucking useless anyway. So I, I don't, I've never depended on them. I don't need them. I've got better. I had a phone in Varna, so I need to get back and, and <coughs> get up back on my phone. So that I know where I am in Varna. I'd be like, but Sophia was meant. It, I never get any of the food straight away. It was better, and I thought like, oh, maybe I should stay here, but. I just didn't, I think it was because of change, I just didn't want change, I just wanted yeah, to go back yeah. to where I was safe, where I was, I was happy, I was safe, and I had a phone, that's just, well, like, like, someone had brought them all back, uh, yeah, I, wonder, I, I shared the phone with, uh, when the lads there, just, he had a phone, I said, let me use it, and I'll, top, I'll, get, I'll get it topped up, she so was happy with that, I remember going to, um, Saphir, um, landed in Saphir, and, um, Jesus, I suppose, if there's ever, what looks like, um, Soviet Russia, <laughs> Then Sophia really looks yeah. like it's the essence of what so like big nice old thing, like tower blocks and like yeah, like, like yeah. dark sort of like oppressive sort of and mate I can't imagine what their prisons are like it's, like it's mad because you can't just come away with like a bit of like a, a knowing about the culture and knowing about the country I probably know more about the country than fucking most because. The they kind of like they have like the national days and like what's this national day for? Well, on this day we defeated the Turks. I'm like, well, Turkey's all right. Don't mention the Turks. You're fucking like, oh, oh, you're like, God, oh, it's sad. But, yeah, it's the the prison itself. Vanna was in like it was on it went on the outskirts of the city. It was like on the the north the, the north end of the city. 
but you're locked out and you're just seeing like uh, 20 rows of just these Soviet like blocks and I was like people live in them they were like yeah I was like fucking hell mate it's just yeah just that's crazy isn't it and and I would have thought I would have thought that's that Sophia prison because in Varna I presume there was no other Brits you were the only Brit I was the only one it was yeah. that uh, an Asian lad who came in once uh, uh, from Hastings he spent like a few days there um and I remember, I, I, the, the moment I realised, like, I'm, I'm getting too comfortable here is, and I remember, because it was like a the typical um, prison where the, there's all, like, a dome and the, all the wings are off it, so the gates to it were on the on the dome. So, like, the big steel doors open. Every time the doors open, you kind of, everyone's at the front looking, like, down to see what's happening. And I just seen an Asian fella, I was like, so many of them here, what's happened? So, you come up and he was there, so, do you English? He went, yeah. He says, where are you from? I went, Liverpool. He went, fucking hell. You get everywhere, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, get on this thing. You know, I said, how long are you here for? He said, I don't know. It's um, a business thing. I was like, all right. You're all right here. Well, it'll be safe for you. Yeah, you're, in, you're all right. You know, don't worry about it. But I was made up just to have someone who spoke fluent English. I just yeah, battered yeah. him for days. In the end, he was like, fucking hell, I need to get out of here. <laughs> he was like, what's happening in England then? Like, oh, no, 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 come on. What's, mm. and it's, and it's like Oasis. Yeah, I've got Oasis on me. I, like, fucking hell, this guy's just battered. He was made up to get out. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, that, that was the thing I was going to ask. Because in Sofia, obviously, it's the capital of Bulgaria. The chances are there's, there's going to no be more Brits there. Though. There's no other no, right now, only, right? I, I always knew that was the only English there. I knew... There was there was a foreign I went on the foreign wing in Sofia. So the foreign had low Turks, Armenians. The Armenians always got it, they were brilliant. There was a lot there. I, when I, I got um, moved from Sofia at like four in the morning to go back to Varna and I had this like rosary, I think um, on the family got it. I like a few, so you just I wouldn't wear them, I just put them on the bed. And um because I got up that early, I basically just picked up like my duvet, just uh, like a, the prison thing I threw it in my bag and just went and I left it all so I rang my mum and said I left, left all them rosaries and that well, Sophia but it is what it is and this Armenian come back to he got arrested on a different charge in Sophia and come in and was like I've got your fucking rosaries like get it <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. But, did, uh, did you more, become mates with like any of them? I'm still good mates with one of them who kind of like coached me through it like like God like just like his advice was just brilliant. Like he, he was the one who just said, "What can you, what can you change? You can't change this." Mm. You know what I mean? It's it is what it is. You're young enough, you, you'll get through it. And when I was like on visits, I was always saying to me, like my dad, "Oh yeah, I'll speak to Ivan about that. I'll speak to Ivan." And um, and my dad said, uh, "How is he?" Like my never, dad never met him, so I'm telling him like, the, like Ivan said this, and like the lawyer saying this. I speak to Ivan because I was always bouncing like ideas off him. And he's actually one day, I'm going to fucking meet this Ivan, you know, if we come down and he's like about eight foot, fucking massive, my dad went, fucking hell, are you messing? <laughs> <laughs> but my mum and dad had a tacky driver, or like the family had a tacky driver, <laughs> it was kind of like, like the, the um, like mind there. So we picked them up and take them to court and take them to the prison. And the man had seen Ivan and Ivan went red and was shouting at him in Bulgarian. And I, I, I could just pick up a bit, I was like, fucking hell, it's all that. And like the mind was like, was just shit himself. So my dad was like, and the man was saying to me, dad, your son's fine, don't worry about him or all that. So I went up and said to Ivan, who's that? He said, he ripped me off years ago. And when I come to prison, I got onto him and said, go and give my wife the money. And he told me to fuck off. <laughs> so the fellas turned up to a prison seat and went, oh shit. <laughs> oh, God. And like, you're, um, are you going through phases where like, maybe I'm trying to fucking... Make it seem all lovely, but like you're going through phases where you're thinking, I don't want to read loads of books or I'm going to smash the gym, I'm going to be fucking doing a thousand press ups a day. You go yeah. through that, like, yeah, you, you, you go to the gym just to get off the wing. <clears throat> so that, but their gym over there is it's it, it was more just like it's like a little patch of the like outside of the prison. Um, a few like fucking dumbbells from like the Soviet era and all that stuff like you couldn't really use, but you you just you're just in there just getting out. They're like a, a, a little pitch outside as well like a makeshift footy pitch so in the summer you'd, you'd have a little game of footy out there which was all right just something to get hard to sell mm. i mean it's the they say the gym the gym was more the exercise yard you just go out and you just you're talking to the guard in the tower just 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 to get out the wing just to break up the day yeah and once a week they had something called the magazine which is the the shop so you go down to the basement of the shop um 
you know, your credit built up, so you then you're going through your credit, getting your bits and bats, and you just then uh, you'd have a calendar and have like a visit in your calendar just where. So it's just you're working to little bits. You're not seeing like like I did like an appeal in like three months. I wasn't even looking three months ahead. I was just looking to next Friday, got a visit. Saturday there's there's actually a match on the telly. All right, just little mm-hmm. bits like that. Just that, that's how you get through it. That little it? routine, yeah. the routines, routine. and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, have you got friends then and family coming out what, every couple of weeks, every month or uh, something? Like? To be, like, most weeks, to be fair. Oh, most really? Weeks, yeah. yeah, yeah, most weeks. Um, and was the, was the support of the club itself or anything like that? Did you hear from uh, anything? Uh, they allowed us to do the fundraising outside the grounds, inside the grounds as well, which was good. Uh, players like sent messages like Carragher and, and, and I think Carragher Gerrard and a few others they, all, they, they, they kind of um, financially helped as well uh, when I was still over there yeah that's good yeah to know that the club just didn't wash their hands off and like no that. they were quite good the club they, the, the, the players I mean they, they taught us the further when I was I don't know if I was in England or I think I was in England at the time and the players had the t-shirt on before the game which is a bit of a big statement because it, it was it was it was political. So you're not allowed to do nothing political. So I think the club just said, "Well, listen, this is what we're doing." Or the, the more the players said, "This is what we're doing," you know what I mean? And we'll take the heat for it. And that they, they kind of got like, I think you're for or something like kind of rep, like give a statement against this, and you can't do that. It's yeah. it is political. But I mean, I, I can't remember when I first went away. We played um, Jessica Sophia. In a qualifier for the next season, Champions League. It was a, it must be Sophia. So we play, and then I'm seeing like um, I the, must have been mad thinking if you're out there and, and there, yeah, I'm, I'm, that there and Sophia, I'm in fan. But on the advertising, I'd like support Michael Shields in the first half, and the second half, fuck a big drapery over it. Can't see that because it's right on the telly. So it's like first half, I'm like I'm in the cell because the telly's that crap. You can't make it out. I'm like that's it there, and they're like looking, going, what's the same? Going support Michael and all that. They're like, yeah. The second half, they're like, where is him? Going to fucking cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. God, crazy, so, mate! Incredible, and 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 at this point, then, are you thinking like, is the human rights um, charities coming over you and speaking to you at all, uh, or like you mentioned Mojo the consulate? Did. There's the Ministry of uh, Mis- Mis- Miscarriage of Justice organization. Um, oh, that's not a fella's name. He was brilliant, actually. I can't remember. Dave, Dave Jacobi, was it? Something Jacobi. But he come and observe the trial, and he he just like they gave a statement on behalf and just said it was it was a sham, basically it's complete shambles. It was, it's just yeah. a sham, yeah, just a sham. It's just and, and can, then they called her a kangaroo court, which is <laughs> what it was. Yeah. And are these appeals to try and stop the sentence, as in cut the fifteen sentence, or is it to try and get your own? To it the was. There's always appeal on two points. There was appeal for a retrial on the basis that I had new evidence that I had a. a even though we withdrew the statement, we still had the he still made a statement that he committed the crime. So we'd appeal on that and then the we'd appeal for less than the money and less than the fine. Sorry, less than the fine and less than the sentence. I mean it, it that was kind of like a safety net because you knew if, if you don't get the retrial and everyone was like saying that fifteen years is harsh, it's you're eighteen, you shouldn't have got fifteen years. I could even before it, people were like you get if you get killed, you're gonna get five. Uh, even then, it was like fucking five years, you know, it's a fucking disaster. So we'd always appeal, and then it went, we went through the Vana appeal, and they just they they just said no, no, knocked it all out. Um, still fifteen years, still eighty thousand, no retrial. And I went to Sophia. And I I was always like convinced that Sophia would be the one because they were saying that's like the most fairest court you're gonna get. They'll hear they will hear the case. Vana won't send their 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 judgment back because they all work in the same court. They're not going to turn round to the original judge and go, you got that wrong. She said, but Sophia, they will turn round, look at the case and go, yeah, you got that wrong. But all they done. But it's funny because I'm Sophia, I never actually appealed the sentence and the fine. I just appealed for the retrial because we were just convinced we're getting the retrial. And then they knocked back the retrial and said, but we're going to lessen it to 10 years. I was like, fucking hell, I didn't even bother about that. I want the retrial. But <laughs> that was kind of then, once that come through, it was like, all right, Let's just get out of here. You you're not you can't win. You're not gonna win. Let's just get the transfer. And 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 and, and, and was there at any point? Because I can imagine, I can imagine them saying, given what what you've talked about about money being involved, is that them going, 
you you want to retrial it? Well, it's fucking. This is this is how much it is. And then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean that the retrial then was it opens up the civil case too, which is it was always that I always I was always convinced it was just a civil case. They just wanted the money. The money was the main aspect of it. They just and I was everyone was like people in prison were telling me. You're just a cash cow. They're gonna get the money and they'll send you home. You, and I didn't think they could stop the transfer without the money. But then they were saying, "Oh no, you're not going until that money." So it was kind of a ransom. Yeah, it was yeah, just, it's just a ransom. Yeah. Just they a, was, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were saying you can get transferred once the money's paid. So they, they knew, like, and uh, to be fair, I knew it. If I got back to England, there was fucking no chance they were getting that money. And it was just gonna turn around to them. You're not getting it. So I kind of knew that too. So we were like, "Oh, we're gonna have to pay this now." So they had to do more fundraising to get it. So you had to fundraise the 80 grand? 80 grand to, to pay him off. To then get, tra- and then they were all right about you being transferred? Then, then? then yeah, well, I think, I, I think that between getting paid, it, it, I'm sure it's done in instalments. It was like a ransom, it got done in instalments. And the last one, and I, can't, I can't remember how much it was, but it was like, once that's done, you can go home. I was like, it's just money, isn't it? it, it all is of it's so just money. fucked up. But yeah, I'd, I'd never, once it got paid, I was... Back on, I was back in England after about two or three weeks. Yeah, God, they just got done that quick. So, how long did you actually do in Bulgaria then? Nineteen months. Yeah, yeah, I done more you? over here. I done a lot over here, but uh, three, three years over here. Yeah. yeah. So just under two years then. Yeah, in in yeah, a port. Yeah, just went away in May. I got transferred. Um, so this is May two thousand winter the next year because I was I went, didn't want to do a winter again out there because the winters were, were bad. So I remember like like probably like being an addict to the family and that and was like, listen, is this getting paid? Because once it's minus ten here, I'm fucking cold in the cell. We had no heating and that and it was just wrapped up in the cell. I was like, get me out of here before because the winters are bad. So they got done just before the winter and I got home then. So yeah. it's kind of like the November, December 2006 I, maybe or something? You're back yeah, in the UK? Yeah, towards the end of the year, yeah. Yeah. I was back in the... Got transferred. I got transferred from uh, Varner Airport. Uh, you, I went to Gatwick. Uh, the closest prison to Gatwick is Feltham. I got to Feltham about three in the morning. Got down for the induction for nine. And I was just, I remember just being in the prison, was like, this isn't Bulgaria. <laughs> I would never like half like longing for like Bulgaria. It was like, fucking hell. It was just, it was, it was, it's a British prison then. It was just totally different. It was just more rules, more regimented. You know, you can't have a phone, obviously. Like, I can't, yeah, have a phone. I can't yeah. go. I can't go in the exercise yards, like in my flip flops, when I want. You know, it's. But I was closer to home, and then I got moved that day up to Wigan. I went from Feltham up to Hindley, which is a a Y HM HM Y O Y with like a young offenders institution, which is then I'm a lot closer to, to the family yeah. mm. can I just you know whenever I think of people like prisoners being transferred from another country I feel like I was on a uh, domestic flight just a standard a standard domestic flight yeah, yeah hang, hang, handcuffed hang, on the hang, plane yeah do they cover you? You know when you see them like walking through the airport and they like put cover like you put like a jacket over to like try and hide the fact no, that you. No, I should explain it here. So I was in a part of the prison. I'm sorry, I was in a part of the airport in Varna that's that's like closed off. It's like a, a, a the police have like their own office there, so they process process you. There was two like British police and it was one Interpol fella the British police were fine the Interpol fella was very formal like and I, I, so you you're always looking for like comfort from people you know what I mean you're like do you know where I'm going oh you're going to somewhere in London what's it like I thought I was going to Wandsworth because Wandsworth was where people got sent you're like oh I think you're going to Wandsworth what's Wandsworth like uh, it's, it's a prison what's it like though is it full of is it shit all who's in and all you just you want like you want to find out yeah and the Interpol fella just wouldn't even answer me he was just like, all right, uh, he was taking the fingerprints, doing all that. They had to, had to get an emergency passport. So yeah. to, he was going through all that. Um, and I was first on the plane. I mean, we sat at the back row, so there was no one behind us. So sat in the corner seat. I had two alongside me. The Interpol fella sat directly ahead of me. But I was still handcuffed on the plane, but I had my jacket. I had a jacket over the handcuffs. And then once we landed, they just said, like, let everyone get off and then you're... you're 
you're last off the plane, basically, straight onto a police van. And that must be so incredible. Like, considering the people on that flight have not oh, a clue yeah. what you in the very back seat have just gone through, and you when just. You're on the plane, just have a look at the back rows and see if anyone's <laughs> you have the jacket on the lap, and you're like, oh, you, you know, it sounds like a stupid question, but you know, when you're, you meet the British coppers, again, it probably does sound stupid, but if it was me, I'd maybe be going. Hey, I didn't fucking do this, you know. I'd, I'd be going, like, or, or, or you're just so, like, it's done now. You it's done, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I know, it's... I'm, I, but you know what I mean? A little bit was in my mind, like, it'd be nice just to get there and you just take the handcuffs and go, like, on you go. But I, you can't, it's it's pie in the sky, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, I remember there was... Um, and did they know your story and stuff? Or they, cause yeah, the, yeah, we was talking to him, like, at a bar. He was like, what was it like? Yes, it's, it's not actually that bad, actually, you know. It's... it's there's times where things that, that I thought were normal and you look back and you're like that's not normal you know what I mean it's <laughs> it's the, the, I can you wait until I got to a British prison I was like alright over there weren't normal the hospital wing was I mean you, you, the, there was a thing that the lad tried to kill himself so you try and kill yourself over here you know, quite rightly you've got like counselling and you get help you try and kill yourself over there they, they handcuffed him to a bed <laughs> And you were like, all right, that's how they... That, but then over there, when you're in that environment, you think that's normal. And mm-hmm. you come over here, and I was in prison here, and they were like, you were asking me, any mental health issues, are you feeling down? I was like, no, no, I'm all right. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Why, it's, you can speak to us, you know. No, sounds. Uh, where can I get a visit? And it was like, all right, sounds. <laughs> but it's, it's part of, like, it's... It, yeah, you, the, you just get used to the... Just adapt, yeah, yeah, you just adapt to it. It is, it is what it is. That's it's a, the phrase I kept using because it just was. It, yeah, it it's just it is. yeah. I can't win and change the prison. I'm gonna have to change to meet this place. Before we kind of move on to that part of the journey now, strange question again. What was your best memory of being there? Oh. Or your funniest, if you like, because I'm, I'm imagining there must have been some nice times. Yeah, you know? and then like even the winter, you snowball fights. And you'd fucking throw a snowball at the box down, he's cocking the shotgun at you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just, I don't know. It's just. It's weird, isn't it? Like, I, yeah. I found, like, with, you know, some really dark times that I had in, like, Afghan and stuff, and there's humour in sadness, everything, and there's humour yeah, in, you yeah. know. There's piss taking and everything. Even, like, when I got the sentence and had a visit with family, and you're just like, fucking hell, well, you won't be here when I get out, will you? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just dark humour, just, it gets you through it. Mm. it it's. it's you just take you take the piss out of yourself as well. It is, you know, it's only I could get fitted up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But me, there wouldn't be no one else but me. It had to be me. Yeah, oh. especially if your friends the thing when you said before yeah. that you were the yeah. <laughs> it had to be him. You may come on a visit <laughs> to see me in Bulgaria and they come over at my sister's, and they coming in on a visit. My sister was like, "He's fucking hard work." I was like, why? He thinks it's an holiday. <laughs> and, like, and he come in the visit and was like, oh, lads, yeah, shit this, isn't it? Yeah, going out tonight. And I'm like, what are you fucking telling me for? <laughs> 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 I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, I've got loads of lads weekends going to Bulgaria to yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm bothered. God. <laughs> so when do you, when you come back to the UK, mate, how many years are you thinking <clears throat> you're going to have to do now? So you've done, you're getting, <sighs> it's 15, it's gone down to 10 years, now. Like your sentence. Years, yeah. But you've done 18 months. So you you still got what eight and a half years to do? That's what they're telling you. No, in the UK. It's because I went to British, then it changed the sentence and changed, and they kind of based it on their courts. Then, like, if I got ten years there, so it would have been five. I think his release date was it was two thousand and ten. So we weren't actually far off being released when I did get the pardon. I only had about eight months left to do, so it's kind of they released me by eight, like, I think it was about eight months or something. So it's I, all you have to say it was eight months. I was out. I was nearly done anyway. But it saved me like a lifetime of hassle of like um, the parole or probation. Sorry, because they were trying to force like not force, but they were saying like, all right, any your witness statement, you're on the A lobby. Yeah, well, we think you should do an alcohol anonymous course. Like fuck off, <laughs> you're not doing it. <laughs> like they were like, we should do like an anger management course because it's it's a violent crime. I was like, I'm not doing it. They were like, well these things will go against you when you get out and you have to do probation. So I was kind of dreading getting out and I was just, I was, I was a pig headed at the time and then we're just saying to the woman, you're getting nothing. It's, you're getting nothing from me. I'll get out and I won't even turn up to you. I'm not bothering with you. 
And she, I, I, now I, I think you're making a life a bit hard, but I was that pig headed. It was just like, I'm doing what I've got to do. I'm walking out, and then you'll never see me. That's it. And she was like, Well, I've got a job to do. I was like, All right, so, but you're, you're not going to get me on any course about nothing, though. You're not going to get me to sit in an anger management course to try and talk about a crime that I haven't done. She said, You're mm. fucking mad. It's, it's not happening, is it? Yeah. Like, you're not going to get me want to leave prison to come down and piss in a cup or to to come and speak to you about how I'm feeling. It's just it's not on the table. Yeah. It's just not happening. So fair play, mate. Because you yeah, I just, it was more like pay, even when it, like it was just like pig headed. It was just like I'm not doing it. It's just I, I'm not playing. I'm not going down that route. Because mm. you, 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 I was a bit angry at that kind of they put me through the they treated me like through the system like. As if I did like I was guilty, which is fine. But at the time, I was like, you "Fucking hell, you, you think I've done this crime?" But I, I suppose they're as just doing the, a job. As in with the British, just yeah. Just like thinking. I went from Hindley to Garth, which is Cat and I was I wanted to go to Cat C to get to an open prison sooner. I was half open just to go to an open prison. To be fair, it was like surely like you, you know one ever done this. And then I went to Hindley to Garth, which is Cat and I remember just being fuming, like they're treating me as if I did this crime. Like mm-hmm. the, the the guy, like they're sending me to like a, a, a proper adult prison over here, rather than just saying, you know what, we'll just give him an easy time. So we kind of built up like a resentment there against them. Mm-hmm. But then it, again, once you get into it, you just keep working and you just work mm-hmm. through it. Just, mm-hmm. just I can only do what I can do. That's yeah, of course. And I can. Only, I, I'm surprised that the. The ruling that in another cut co- like that is that ruling over there is transferred to this country. If you know what I mean, even though it's even though for you to be locked, if I was locked up in a prison in the UK here, I'd have had to gone through the UK justice. Si- Do you know what I mean? The UK justice system. So it's weird that they can just transfer. I know, obviously, you wanted to come home, as in, as in it's not the same justice. Yeah, is as in like you haven't gone through the same court proceedings like yeah, co- yeah. everything you have like the, the treaties like uh, yeah of course yeah to the transfer the prisoner treaties so you, you're probably bound by what's in that treaty itself which is probably you know it's I suppose people like get done for drugs in Thailand and then you come over here they're not going to turn around and go but we're going to stick to Thailand rules and you're doing fucking 80 <laughs> years for the spliff yeah. they're not going to do it are they yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not going to happen so yeah. it was kind of like once it got transferred over now you're on our system you will treat you as if you were convicted here that's fine yeah. which is kind of like it didn't tie in with the pardon then because then you were I'm like what about the pardon well we can't do that because you weren't convicted here well I'm fucking in prison here so it doesn't marry up then does it yeah of it, course yeah. that's, that's kind of I'll be so, wondered that are, the are the appeals still going on then so you're back in England now back in England um, we appeal to the uh, European Court of Human Rights we just got knocked back. Uh, we got knocked back without merit, which is think that they dock cases back without looking at them. They don't even open the folder. They just say we're not looking at that. So that was a kick in the teeth. That like we had a you know, blatant human rights like violations. That them um, ID parades are uh, tr- uh, uh, they break like international human rights codes, but they just never looked at it. So then we kind of like turned on the government. Then well, I say like we. I, I, I weren't even like participating. I, I, I just let them do it outside. I just looked after myself in prison. That's that's mm-hmm. all I done. But the, the the campaign then looked at like the British system and said, "Well, you can pardon them." And then, then once they got the the focused on that, it took about two years for them to. And then uh, they had a judicial review. And um, once the, the review came out and said that you, you can legally pardon them, that's when it's. It, I think about three or four months after that, I did get pardoned. But I, even then, it's just, just dragging the feet and, oh, we can't do this and can't do that. And you're like, fucking hell, mate. Did all this pardon come on the back of someone else admitting it? Was that the main reason for the pardon? Yeah, yeah. He kind of, Jack Straw kind of hid behind that. He knew the case from day one because he, he's always been aware of it. So, And then I think when like the, the, camp, the people in the campaign met with him, and we're talking to him, he says, oh, I know, Michael was in a lineup with three Chinamen, I've heard it. So we can't, he knew the merit, he knew what the case mm-hmm. was, he, he knew, like, basically, I weren't, like, I weren't there. He knew, he had it all there, but he just hid behind the legal fact that, and he kept saying it to them, if I had release him, I would, but I can't do it. And they were like, well, you can, and we're going to, and we'll take you to court to prove you how, how, how you can do it. 
So he was, he was adamant that he couldn't because he just didn't want that decision because it's then he's upsetting Bulgaria by releasing me and it kind of fucks up the transfer treaties in future that people will be reluctant to send tri- prisoners back to you if you're going to release them. So it, it, of course, it was yeah, a hard decision yeah. for him like to, to put all that in the mix. And we were just saying to him, they're not asked over there. They've got the money, they're not asked. They're mm. not bothered. They, they'll probably kick up, like, they'll probably release a statement going, but disappointed. What are they going to do? It's, it's, it's my, this, yeah, that, this is my life, though. Yeah, now, exactly. Yeah. I've been saying, but this is fucking happening Yeah, I'm me. stuck in here. But uh, once we took them to court and we won that, then even then he never done it straight away. He kind of flip-flopped like he does. But then he... I think it's just, the pressure in the end, he just... He just said, all right, Sand. He, he stumbled across new evidence. The, the evidence has always been there. He just hid behind that mm-hmm. fact. And then Sand said, yeah, you can go. So even if, like, for example, on that, that thing you just mentioned of other countries releasing uh, prisoners in future, I mean, you can imagine, can't, obviously, Bul- Bulgaria isn't, I imagine, a massive trading partner of the UK. But if you've got, like, if you were done in the US or China or, like, some of these big countries that have got a big backing political... yeah backing mm-hmm. with in conjunction with the UK and whatever country you can see why they just they I mean it's so so sad to say it but like you can understand why they don't want to get involved in it because it's, it's yeah. such a like game of chess they don't want you know the US buys so much goods yeah. from all our country and like we don't want to fuck you know what I mean it's I mean, like you see it now the the the, 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 the American lady who ran the lads over here yeah the, the Americans are just like you're not getting it it's fucked I can't it's, believe yeah. that yeah and it's and then we've got like a, a pretty sure they'll have American prisoners here. You just turn around and say, all right, then all three T's are off. You just go a pair of balls and say, all right, if that's the case, all three T's are off. You're not getting a prisoner out of this. Anyone who, American who gets it done here, you're just not getting them. Yeah. They're stuck over here. But then you've got their families over there, which will kick off, which in turn will make things happen, which will get the woman back over here. But yeah. it's, it's, it's a mess. It is, it's a mess, but... That's why you have these treaties and the details are in these treaties. I and mean, that's what we were saying to him. Under the treaty, once I come back into this country, I was treated as if I was I was tried in a British court. That proves you can release me. I, I, I'm not like you can say, well, it's Bulgaria's problem. The treaty defines that you've got to treat me as if I was tried here. Was, so you can release me, you can do it. But it's okay, it's just he didn't want the responsibility to do it. That was the issue. He he just hid and hid behind it. And you, 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 know, you shouldn't have to take the government to court for something mm. like that. And which court do you take them? To? Like, is it the High, court, the high in Lond- court in yeah, London? Yeah, yeah. Ju- uh, judicial review. And it's, it's I, I, I went there because it's, it's not a criminal court. I had no part in it. But the lawyer was saying, the judge was saying to the government lawyer, if a piece of evidence comes up now, to say the CCTV, which has always been like, if the CCTV pops up now and proves that he weren't at that crime scene, would you release him? And the government went, no. I said, well, why not? You know what I mean? They were like, oh, it's not our decision. And the judge, that's what the judge was was deciding on. I said, well, it is your fucking decision. You've got a decision to make then. So that's when I got out. But it took us years just to convince them to do it. it and and who, you, like, who, who's doing this for you on, like, your mum, your dad, supporters? But like All of them. Um, so match going lads, I don't like, who is it? Like, who's I mean, pushing this? It, the campaign was, it's like an amalgamation. It was, yeah, the, the, Core family, like all, all the family, but they, um, you always took advice from like, like, um, I know the husband justice campaign, Sheila. She advised us on Peter Weatherby, who was there, like, she used him as a lawyer. He was a, he's a Manchester based human rights lawyer. He was brilliant. He just, mm. his, his advice, you just follow him and say, listen to him. He knows what he's doing. You listen to, and he was the one who, who convinced, who, who took us down like the judicial review route and, and then tied the government up and, that's what got me out. But Joe, um, Joe Anderson, who was the opposition at that time, he was involved in like the day to day, like running the campaign. He was there all the time. It was, they did have like an office in my mum and dad street, and in the kinds of like that. When it died down a bit, it just it just become like the the home was the the campaign office. Must be make me the horrific time you're going through. It must be must be a nice feeling knowing that you've got like a city almost. Yeah, you know, so many God, people yeah. in this city. Yeah. It's because I think the only thing I could think of being worse than what you've your story is knowing that no one gave a fuck. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, it's it went until I come back home. 
that you can't like you get the echo and you see like fucking hell it's, this is night and day but over there it was public and that's kind of what made me switch off more it was public enemy number one so you kind of at the beginning it was it was just like fucking depressing reading like listening to what they're saying about you and like that's not me mm. like, well I guess when you see it now you come, sorry I come back here and was reading the paper and was like fucking hell this, how come they can see but they can't yeah. mm. mate and, and again mate being like a match going red and stuff it's like you see sometimes on the telly now England fans go and you act oh, like fucking yeah. dickheads and you're thinking yeah. I'm being I'm being viewed like that people are thinking yeah. that's me that's, I've always yeah. thought and knew that that's that, like I got tired with that brush the, the British like hooligan is a stereotype that plays well abroad yeah. and even countries where I mean Bulgaria is like bad hooligan problems you're watching like one of their matches and they kill each other in the stands and you're like don't fucking see that in England <laughs> yeah. I'm the hooligan but you don't see that in England but yeah, it's it's a stereotype, and yeah. I, but that stereotype I got tired with that, which it's easy then to to portray me as that was a heavy set lad, as a, a shave me because it was about fucking hundred degrees in a prison, and as soon as it turned up, they looked and went, ah, oh, there he is. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't, yeah. We, couldn't have, we couldn't have made him better. Yeah, you know of I mean? course. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, it says it again. Don't know how correct if this is completely nonsense on Wikipedia but it says um, that you were the first British citizen to be granted a pardon after being convicted overseas yeah. Yeah. is that true yeah that's true yeah yeah. that's what we went to court for to, to show you to can show that you do can that. yeah but he's always hit behind that because it's you come from there you, you're a Bulgarian like oh, you, you, you're a foreign prisoner we can't touch that court case you can it's, you'd have accepted me in the treaty it states you've got to treat me as if I'm sentenced here which is it kind of ties in with the, the, the sentence if you're treating me as if I was in Bulgaria then I should do the, the full 10 years but when I come back I got a release date for 2010 which was 5 years I thought well you shot yourself in the foot because you're treating me as if I was sentenced here and tried here mm. but you're saying oh but with the pardon you know well mm. I should be in jail till 2015 then yeah so they kind of they they tied themselves up. We didn't have to do it for them, but yeah, yeah. And when you, when you, God, I can't imagine the feeling. When you know, obviously, you get that real pardon. I can imagine there's two things of that. Finally, this shit storm is over. And secondly, thinking like, well, like, what, what next? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, yeah. what was that feeling? I mean, what, what Tom said there. I mean, what was the? Can you remember the moment where you like? I'm fucking out of here today, or like, or you, you were like, next week I'm out, or did... No, I come in the morning, um, I was, it was in Town Cross, which is a, a, only in Warrington, and was it, uh, I, I, I could come out the blue, I think we knew it, it could be coming. I'm the saying that, like case. you said, you only had eight months as well, though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, and I, to be fair, I was kind of, I was in a, I was in the prison routine, I went, like, thinking about, like, getting out or or like any like potential pardons it was just all right today what do we do we go to the gym we go to the library there might be a, a bit of footy on or something like that or that's that's my day and then they, they come and said oh the governor wants to see you so when, the, when he said that i was like all right this is something different the governor wants to see you because of it, it was it wasn't a disciplinary this is something good then or it can't be bad because of a bad will be bad news you know what i mean <laughs> this is something different so then when i went in and he said yeah you're going home today i was like fucking hell what, did that's how much notice you give yeah today? just said you're going home today um, get your stuff together and I went back for my mum and dad and they were fucking out in tears on the phone I was like you need to come get me now <laughs> you know what I mean but fuck I feel like crying now man that yeah. feeling of like yeah just, I, I weren't really emotional at it I don't know I don't know it was kind of just relief it was just relief of getting the pardon just like I, I didn't want like getting out under a cloud and and still being like, like guilty, I just looked at the pardon and went, "That that that does me. That I'm happy with that. That that just uh, subsequently in this country clears me of this crime. I'm happy with that. That I'm not give a fuck about Bulgaria or what they say. I got the pardon. That's it. I'm happy. Then let's just get home. What were like the officers like? What you did? You know, they know you've got this pardon. Were they almost because it's a weird situation because the prisoners, the, the guards, they've been treating you like a prisoner. But, yeah, then, but then it yeah. gets to this point where there's one day they go oh well you're actually fucking innocent all the time yeah D- is it a bit like I don't know sorry, I don't Michael, think it's like that because I don't think they, they, they tend not to treat people as like like I never got treated differently to any other prisoner which I wouldn't want to be because I think that's bizarre though that it builds it kind of builds resentment against you like oh, fucking hell 
why is he getting that? Yeah. He's, just, he's a prisoner like us. Which is worse on you anyway, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, so it wouldn't want to be. But then, there is, you just, I was a prisoner. That's that. I, that's all I was. I'd, I'd have to ask them if I wanted to do some. It wasn't a case of, oh, I'll just go to the gym on my own because, well, I'm fucking innocent. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. They couldn't do that. It's, <clears> it's, I still had to follow their rules. You know, call them fucking boss or whatever they want to be called. <laughs> just, just go along with it. God, just on that, yeah. before we talk about the actual release bit, what was the prison, the British prison like compared to Bulgaria? As in, like, you know, did you still have that same fear of, you know, um, fucking hell, who, who does speak to? Can I, like, yeah, you know, and, yeah. I think, I think, I think the language think, barrier, yeah. I think, makes it seem scarier in Bulgaria, but it, but it might have yeah. been scarier here if you'd seen, I don't know, like a man clad or like a. Yeah. I, I, being a scouser, I don't know what was any change. I hate it. I hate. I don't know. I, I, I think prisoners all get it the same, and it's it's any anyone who says they don't, I think they're probably lying. Going to a new, a, like a new prison, even if you wanted to go to that prison, it's still like nerve wracking. I never going to Garth, and I was like, fucking Garth. I knew what Garth was. I was like, fucking Cappy Prison. How the fuck have I ended up here? And then I can see in the prison, I was like, fucking hell. But once you get in, you get settled. And you just you just force yourself out, like get out to say, go, go, no, fucking have a game of get out, have a game of pool, get out, look for a friendly face, just do something. Don't like wallow in it, just force yourself out to sell. No talk to fucking anyone, just just get going, get yourself going, speak to the screws, when's the gyms open or fan, where can I go to the library fan? Just get just just get like the ball rolling. The worst thing you can do is like go to a prison and then like sit in your cell and you're like all right, tomorrow right, Michelle. Like, no, just get out. Mm. Just, just get, get out. Get going and just. It like, sounds just deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Deal it sounds it. mad, but what do you say? To, it's like conversations during lock, lockdown. You know, we've been up to fuck all. Like, what yeah. do you say? What do you say to someone <laughs> when you're trying to make a new friend? Like, all right, lad, what's happening? Not on mate. I'm fucking in prison. Like, what, what yeah, do you, it's, <laughs> it's just mundane. I think the mundane of the, the most mundane things. Like, where's the laundry? How can I get me, me stuff first? Sands. Where's the exercise? Yeah, it's just mundane. It's football, anything. Just, no. Did anything you, you can. Did you keep any mates with any lads in the UK prison system? Yeah, yeah, I did. I actually went back to Garth. Um, there was a lad who was from over the water. He was all right, actually. Um, I still see a, f- a few out now and again. Um, being from the pool, you fucking tend to see them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But mate, walking out then. Oh, so yeah. like, I, I've got this vision of uh, of just like, just you walking out with your bag, like literally like a bag in your hand and thinking. Just, yeah, like, just a bag of. It's more um, I like, uh, just like personal bits. Uh, yeah, and I'm being in the car on my own. I hadn't shaved for about a week. I thought I knew, but I, like it was unexpected. I was fucking big of beard and all that. And I was like, I haven't had a shave. I haven't really had time for a shower or not on here. And I was like, you can't go home. The press is outside the house and it's fucking The chaos. press not outside the prison, no? Yeah, there was photographers outside the prison. Because the prisons hate, like, they hate like, any um, any exposure like that. The governor start getting worried. So as soon as he sees press outside, he just looks at me and goes, when are you getting picked up? Get out of here. We don't, they don't want that. You know what I mean? Really? Just, yeah, yeah. Even, like, over there, they would they'd argued against keeping me in a prison because they hate any public prisoners or prisoners who are like in, in, in the media, they fucking hate because it's it just brings spotlight on the prison. They, mm-hmm. It's bringing press to them that they don't want press. Yeah, they don't want any asshole. They don't yeah. want no asshole. Yeah, they just. So he was just saying to me, oh, "Well done, blah blah blah." Um, when you're getting picked up, go go now. You can go now. I was like, well, they're on the way up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't get out of it. Yeah, I think it was Joe who picked me up. My mum and dad. You Joe I, Anderson. Joe and I had to go to Joe's. To get changed and that, because the house is just a circus. You know what I mean, but it took a few. Even then, I couldn't go home straight away. I took home like a, a fucking hotel, but all the family come to the hotel. It's what just because like, it was so manic. It's just because it was just that. Yeah, it's just chaos. You say if you go home, it's just gonna. You're not gonna get settled. It's just. It's just gonna be a circus. Um, so I had to went to an hotel for the night. All the family come at a party and that. Then the next day went home. What in Liverpool? Like the hotel was when I was in Cheshire we had a, a, like a bit of a do in, in the hotel mm. when I say do like just kept the bar open yeah yeah god yeah what a feeling yeah, yeah. Fuck. did you ever well, miss that at the time did you no 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 just the way like you even that's think back thing, even now you, you can't have a, a beard when you're in prison because that's just you'd see people just cracking up when like 
they were like they've got the bear to the bear to come to visit them and then they go and you just see people depressed and you're like fuck that me yeah yeah fuck glad you never had one yeah just when like i can imagine that first drink like alcoholic drink when you when you're in yeah. that bar Pissed and you think <laughs> And you think all like you just I've got my in my head, mate, this like again, you when you watch Bang Up Abroad and like you see like and you know they're walking into something which obviously you didn't and no one would have ever guessed that you were what you were walking into when you went on that flight, when you went got the train from here to Glasgow and then and the flight. For the reason why to watch Liverpool when you're yeah. yeah, and then they and then I've got this just you know, you celebrating in Istanbul and like just just all this craziness leading up to that point and you can just see it and then there you are back in that hotel in Cheshire like drinking that pint and you think what the fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think you turn you turn to like detach like the match in that away from it because you, you can't I want that to be I mean listen that was unbelievable the match I don't ever want to think back to Istanbul and think prison because it's to me the two different things. Yeah, I don't. It it, it kill that mis- like Istanbul. If I was to, every time I think about it, all it comes on the telly, and I was go, I'll get that off. I it, I can't. So to me, even when I got out, and if someone said, "Oh, you celebrating Istanbul?" I was like, oh, "Not really. It's they're just celebrating it out." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, that's, yeah, yeah. it's two different things. It, I can't put them together because it'll kill like Istanbul for me. Mm, yeah, of course. Would you ever, I mean, this again, stupid, potential stupid question here, but um, obviously when um, Liverpool played Tottenham, would you ever go abroad at all? I do, I went to Madrid. I went to Madrid anyway. Um, I never got a fucking ticket, but I walked in the bar and my dad had to laugh. Well, yeah, I've got no qualms about it going over and yeah. going back. No, I, if, to be fair, if I could get back to Bulgaria and not be arrested, I'd probably go back and see my mate. But it's just, I, I know as soon as I get off the plane, they're like, hey, Got yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't go. Definitely not, not worth the risk. Yeah, yeah. just uh, Skype. What was um, what was the first match like then that you got went to, and you come Burnley, up? Burnley at home. Weird. Do you remember uh, it? Yeah, yeah, very weird. Yeah, brilliant. Thought. I think we won about four 0 and were people recognising you and stuff? And yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I had a season ticket in the paddock when I went away, and my dad got it moved to the cop when I was away. But then the first game, this club said, oh, you're the guest of the club, you sat in like, what was the old main stand? So we went as a family, it was boss to be fair, but I remember just looking at the cop and was like, that'd be me. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get, get back to just going the match, like normal. All this like, attention, like, oh, I would go down and see the players, and I was like, oh, but I'm awkward with it. I, I'm not, I, I'm someone who just like, I, even like when we went as a family, I'm stood at the back, and they're like, where's Michael? He's like, he's fucking here somewhere. I don't like like the, the, the attention of it all. I'd rather just like just be in the background of it all and oh let me let me every time with the camera, push me dad, you fucking deal with it. You know, I don't <laughs> want to know. How, how did you find that? Because again, it, it was it was it was massive, obviously, wasn't it? And you know Yeah. How did you find it going the match and people going, Oh, you know, you can maybe hear the whispers, oh that's not Michael Shields, lad, or you know, you, or you Yeah, you can't at, at the first few months you can't, I just like, just blocked it out, but then it, it died off, it just, it's, I was always looking forward to it dying off, and then after, I think, like the, the, the winter, once it was like old news, I just go to the match normal, it was fucking brilliant, I was going to the match anyway, but like you said, it was, people are brilliant, and they're stopping you, and you're like, oh that's brilliant, that, I was like, th- I kept every game the same one, I was like, thanks for that, thanks for that, when it never happened, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> just, just go to match. Just, just yeah. be on me. Like, be, like, just be on my own. and Just normal, just yeah. Just normal, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. What I, that's what I wanted. Like, the dreams of just going to match. You know, fucking moaning at someone or being made up. They want to I was miss like, getting pissed off when they got beat. Yeah. You miss it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's, and being normal then, did you think about... Because I suppose when you've been locked up, you've obviously, you haven't, obviously have not, you haven't had to work at all. And you've kind of missed those early years of like 18 of when you've got, you know, you're going through the rigmarole of finding yeah, like yeah. what work, a line of work you want to go through and, and that whole, because like, that's a weird thing. Yeah, just like what were, your, what were your plans before that? Before obviously Istanbul, I, like, uh, what were your college or work or what were you drifting. doing? I was, I was trained, I was doing a railway course just before Istanbul, but we got finished up. To be fair, I was drifting like doing bits and bats with me, like doing like a few mornings with my dad and just picking up little bits of money, but never had like a plan, just just drifting. So I'm always like thankful for it happening, that it kind of like 
shook me out of it a bit and was like, you need to like, when you do get out, you need to like, wake up a little bit because you were going nowhere in life. I was doing nothing. Now I, I come out and I'm like, like, now I've got to do something. Now I, I can't mm. go back to what I was doing before. I've got to stick to something and see it through and, and you know, make a living basically. So how about you're like, what, 22, 23 when you come out? 22, was I? Yeah, 22, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 22. Let's start again. Go back to college. <laughs> Is that what you've done, yeah? Yeah, um, 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 went to college, become an electrician. Started with a company in Liverpool that's gone under now. But um, then there was six years. But then it was that was brilliant because, you know, and that winter I was on a building site. It's brilliant, you know what I mean? It's just the best, like, just... You, you need that, like, like camaraderie again. No, the, the piss taken out of you, you and everyone else. You need that. You don't want to be, you know, going into a situation where they're like, oh, you're areas, just be quiet. You, you, no, you just, well, how how did you find that, mate? Mm. Like, with that, with that banter and stuff, was there... You seem like someone who... You'd have it in the Marines, like, no, that dark humour, did you? Yeah, it's... Because, like, there was yeah. a... Again, you, you'll know that, we'll know about it and whether you're pissed off about it, but, like... The bitterness and out of the blues, like taking the piss and stuff. How did you was you pissed off about that and stuff? Because there was like a song no, at one point, wasn't yeah, there and stuff? Yeah. How did you no, feel about that? Fuck hell. <sighs> Listen, if it's an Everton fan, I went away. You probably take the piss yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it's you take it. It is what it is. Fuck hell. I made up the all know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I, I think your attitude, mate, is it reminds me of, of military lads. You know, yeah. who've been injured, who've had a fucking shit situation. And it's like, oh, what you, I can it, is, it is what it is, and, yeah. and, and it's yeah, it is. It's dark humor. You gotta, you, you gotta laugh at it. You can't. I mean, if you're gonna get upset when someone says something, you're gonna be fucking upset all the time. You just gotta live with it. It's you just take the piss yourself. Yeah. Do you take? Do you um? Do you take? Uh, I can't think of the right word. Here. Do you take life? I was gonna say less seriously, but do you um? Yeah, appreciate you things. That's what yeah, I'm. Yeah, appreciate yeah. things more and have a definitely. You, 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 Little problems like I never like coming out and settled down, settled down. I got got me settled down, my bed, and then that's a, like a new world of problems. That like you, yeah, your mortgage and your foods and all that. And then I was like, fucking, that's fucking killing me. This, but then taking a step back and was like, this is brilliant. You know, this, yeah. these are good problems to yeah. have. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we're moaning about our money to each other or like little bits like that. Uh, work moaning about our situations, and you just take a step back and you're like, this is. But I fucking slapped your arm off for these problems yeah. five years ago. So, you, you, yeah, you kind of like, you look at like people's like little problems in your life. Even now, it's someone to say something and you're like, you have this like lockdown and people are moaning about it. And you're like, listen, it's not fucking terrible, is it? It's not like, it's, it is what it is. You just got to live with it. There's people worse off in the world yeah, than yeah. you having to wear a mask to go into a fucking yeah. shop. I've yeah. done the same, mate. I've, don't get me wrong. Listen, I've, I've fucking hated lockdown. It's it financially fucking things I loved. It, yeah. it, it, it has hurt me yeah. and I've hated it. But yeah, then when I do moan about it to someone, I go, Fuck, I've still got a roof over my head. I've still got fucking money. And yeah. it is it is that perspective thing. Yeah. And I do think it's strange maybe with people like maybe, like me and you and other people who've, when you've been through a lot of shit, I almost think it's a blessing in some ways. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You see people moaning about things and they sit, they're so trivial and you're like, come on. It's it's not a problem. This is it. It's I'd not say that the life is that sad, but you, you kind of look at them and you think, "Fucking get a grip." <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's it, there's, there's people going through worse things and going moaning about the most mundane thing ever, and you just, I just switch off from them. I just I just turn me back and go whatever. It's, I don't want to know. Does does that like appreciation like wear off? Because like, obviously there's a big difference between when you walk out there and you go like I might like. Obviously, like you go, oh mate, like the sun, not sunlight, yeah, but you like, don't mean. I'm so grateful. Yeah, I'm so the, grateful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm so. Yeah, you, oh, I Looking can see the sunsets. trees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then like five Standing or on six. The grass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel the grass. And, Stand outside in the rain, or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then like five or six, that sh- everything wears off, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like that, yeah. like that problem thing where you're just saying of people having problems. Like, does that surely that wears off where you become so used to. Do you know what I'm trying to say yeah, there? Like you can't like you get a calamitage back to being yeah. outside back and you yeah, have yeah. to be a master to get yeah. like yeah. Else type yeah. Thing. yeah. I don't know, I probably moaned at the match a few times and then like people around me go, fucking moaning bastards, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know, it's 
I just I find when people do moan about small things, you just I just switch off from them and just go with it. And not because of I I don't think like oh you want to try bulgare. It's nothing to do with that. I just switch off. I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. It's there's like you said the 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 current situation like economically that's a big problem and you'd see that's a big problem and you're like that I'm you're sympathetic towards that. Yeah. And then you see someone like arguing with uh, with the sh- like the assistant in the shop not to wear a mask and you're like that's a little problem yeah 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 just yeah to yeah just fucking wear so your mask levels in it of, yeah yeah, yeah. It's, I, mean, anyway. I think the probably the the nicest thing mate is is to sit here with you now mate how old are you now 34 10 34 yeah fucking and you got missus and kids and kids two lads missus two lads yeah Brilliant. I good think, problems. Yeah. <laughs> good, different yeah. problems. Good what problems. a nice line that is, though. You know, like different problems. Right? Yeah. It's like just to, to sit there, mate. And again, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but everyone I spoke to, fucking hell, what a, what a nice lad. Nicest lad ever. To hear, me what you've had to go through for those four years of your life when you think 18 to 22. Key, like, key years. Aren't you fucking hell. Yeah, you, yeah. You're meant to be out partying, shagging, yeah. fucking doing this, doing that. And to see what you've had to go through, mate, for something that you never done. It's fucking I horrendous. take it as a blessing, though. I, I remember speaking to um, the lad I was away with, Ivan, and he was he just bouncing ideas because you're trying to make sense of it. And he was like, well, put it this way, how many of your mates have done this? I was like, what the fucking good point you know? <laughs> <laughs> See it as a positive. Yeah, yeah so it, it's all just, it's always there. Like, it's, uh, I mean, you speak to someone, like, and they don't know you, and they, they go, I'll oh, tell them your story. I go, You don't want to know. They go, Tell them. You, you say, Oh, this. And they go, Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> like, yeah, you don't want to know. Yeah. God, yeah. And that, that, that for me, though, mate, is, and now you're there, mate, and you're able to laugh about it now and smile about it, and even look back at it fondly in some ways, and to know, yeah. and to know yeah. that you've got a missus and kids, and life's it's completely different now, mate. I think that is such a fucking. It is a positive. You got to see it as a positive. You got to take everything positive out. It did give like a bit of a different outlook on life. That you just got to be like thankful. I mean, you got to be thankful that you're born here, not Bulgaria. You got to live there. Imagine living there. You, mm. You're surrounded by it every day, and you're surrounded by like an indem- like just a, a corrupt state. That anyone who just wants to get on in life and work, you fucked. You just you want to you, you want to do well in life. Like, you got to be a criminal. It's just a criminal state. The only people who do well there are like it's a mafia state. Yeah, yeah. It's I was I remember speaking to a journalist last year about it. I was like, oh, it's I, I seen the uh, fellow who runs the country. He's like Boyko Borisov. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. I remember he was the chief of police when it was in Vanna and the mayor of Vanna. And everyone used to look and go, ah, mafia. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and like you see him now, and he's like with the EU fucking all the heads of state and you're like ah oh, there he is mafia that's fucking mad that isn't it's mad it? yeah. but it's it's a thing that's like an eu is it an eu state it is an eu yeah, state yeah, yeah, yeah only yeah. very recent quite I recently joined wasn't when it? i was there i think oh was it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think i joined i was joining when i was there it's a criminal it's just it's a it rooted in everything and i know like I'm not saying like corruption doesn't happen here cause it's terrible here but it's so open there mm. like it's all right it's family are coming i know then that that guard's on i can slip him a note and I can get a KFC in. That's it's just accepted. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You get caught with a phone over here, the phone gets took off you, you go down the block. You get caught with a phone there, I've to pay this bastard now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just open. It's it's part it is just part of society. And it's it, all about money. It's just money. Because yeah, yeah. there's there's a lack of money, it just makes it worse. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No way no way to solve I've that. If there's lack of, if there's lack of money then I feel no- sorry for like normal people there. And we had a, a young girl who's a translator, and she we had it. We used her throughout it all. She was she was she was brilliant, and she used to say she was going to Germany. She was like, "I've got a, a, a sister in Germany." Her dad's told her, "Yeah, I'm qualified. You're getting out of the country." I think that's what they do. Anyone with a bit of like common mm-hmm. sense, just get out. Just go go yeah. to Europe. Like where you will do well. Yeah. You're not getting. You just the nail on the head, mate. And it's again, it's it's that thing of being grateful. Like, when we were in Afghan, mate, we had. Um, Anyone who's kind of switched on in Afghan has a bit of, you know, now about them. They become interpreters and they work for the British military as an interpreter. Yeah. They get some money and they'd fuck off and you think fair play to you. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's like, again, by the grace of God, you were born here. You're a scouser. Exactly. It's like, exactly. how fucking lucky are you to have been in, and born and not in the middle of fucking Afghan or middle of Bulgaria? Exactly. You know? exactly. There was a thing, I, I, I read somewhere that there was, um, I think you might have put it on there about some of the um, translators 
are able to get back, yeah. pa- they they British so passports, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, you can't leave stuff. them over there because they're, they're a bit oh, of a target yeah, yeah, then, exactly, aren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. They've, they've turned, turned on, on their own, so yeah. they've got to get them over. Yeah. You're not going to get translated in the future, are you? No. 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 Oh. Mate, this is... Um, Mate, yeah, that's... that's I've, to two hours long and uh, I know, that two hours. <laughs> I, know, I know, mate. Like you say, we, we we said that at the start. I know you've not really, you know, done many of these, mate. And I'm I'm just grateful, mate. Because <clears> I think <throat> as well for you know you're, you're a match going lad now, and I think your story, mate. None of us are match going. Well, none of us are now, <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, it's just so nice, mate. To <clears throat> I think the fact that you you know you're sitting here now with a smile on your face, mate, and it it gives hope for people who've who've, who've suffered injustice, you know. Yeah. And I think it's. It's a it's a story that shouldn't be forgotten, mate. How you fought and your family and the campaign fought, and you got the pardon. It's fucking, especially in Liverpool, mate. And and from like it, it shouldn't be forgotten, mate. And I'm grateful that you come on and and and, and shared the story, mate. Cheers. No, it's been good. It's been good. I, I was gonna just before we, I did find an actual um, list, and there was some crazy, crazy uh, cases on there of miscarriages oh, of justice. Listen, when you look into it, it's. Fucking we mentioned it on one it's of the last podcasts. It, it's mad how in the, in America there's people who are doing thirty yeah, years for smoking yeah. weed. Ah, oh, listen. <laughs> I went to I mean? a, when I got out here. I went to a, an event in Leeds, and done a, and I spoke to them. And a fella said something to me, and I, I, my dad took it like the wrong way. But I said, you know what? What he just said is it spot on. The fella turned round and went, "You were lucky you were in Bulgaria." And, I was, and my dad went, "Why was you fucking lucky?" And I said, "You know what?" He's right there. He said, because in, in Bulgaria, I had the, the perfect place to, for everyone to look and go, well, of course it happens. It's in Bulgaria. It, that shit happens in Bulgaria. It's, people believe it because it, it, it's Bulgaria. It, it doesn't like stretch your imagination to think it. But if it happens here, yeah, people look and go, we don't do that over here. We've got proper, proper uh, systems. I guess so, yeah. yeah. It does happen. Mm. So the, oh, I looked, I, when a fella said so it, I went, true, yeah. You put the nail on the head. It doesn't take away that like, and it went a miscarriage of justice or, or like it, it, it didn't happen. But it kind of made things easier to to say to people, this has happened, and they're like, well, of course it happens. Well, it's fucking Bulgaria, it's fucking corrupt yeah, as fuck. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Whatever it happens. And people, it does happen here. You know, the high profile cases like Barry George and uh, John Camaro's a good case in Liverpool. Lost years of their lives and... People just don't like it's just not picked up in our media because people just go, it can't happen here. Of course, mm. it happens here. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's got to happen. I mean, this is just only on Wiki again. I don't know. People will probably say how relevant is Wikipedia, but I mean, some people here like twenty-one years. Five, I mean, this is some of it in the US, but yeah, like it's horrific, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, insane. Based that... on race as well. It's if you, yeah. you look yeah. into it. Yeah. It's... There was the one. Um... There was the program, didn't he? They done um, here. There's that thing called when is it Enter- something Enterprise when if you're oh, just joint with, Enterprise, joint, yeah, that's yeah, fucked up, terrific, that isn't it? Terrific. So if I we, the if, from if Warrington, if it? the stories where like yeah. someone was just yeah. in a car, fucking driving somewhere at a fucking pizza place or something, yeah, a lad goes in has a fight, stabs someone, and the kid who didn't even know where he was going or whatever, yeah. he kind of got bullied into driving them. I think he was like a younger brother or something. He was like, take us all the pizza shop. They go there, someone gets stabbed, killed. You got done, and this fucking kid's getting getting done for yeah. murder. It's insane, that isn't it's it? And that's in the UK. That's, that's in the UK. I don't know. I, I, the fighting to get that reversed, and I know it was in the media a lot. Yeah, yeah. There was the the, the thing in Warrington when the fella got kicked to death, and there's the one of the lads got done on it. But the the, the, the campaign is like, listen, he's he got done on joint enterprise. He had nothing to do with it. Mm. Was that the father outside his house? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was awful. And that's why, again, though, mate, your story it shouldn't be forgotten because it's thankfully it's a successful story of fighting for miscarriage of justice. No, I I I felt a bit guilty when I got out that I never I I done that event in Leeds, but I kind of just I shied away from it all and and like and then my dad was saying like you got a decision to make you can either stay involved with like miscarriage of justice organisations or you can draw the line. And I remember saying to me, Dad, I feel guilty for saying, but I just want to draw the line. I don't want to keep going. Because I remember speaking about it in Leeds, and it weren't the fact that I was speaking about my case. I was, li- I, I felt terrible, but I was listening to other people's cases. And I was like, fucking hell, mate. It, it just de- it just depressed me. It was strange, yeah? Yeah. I was mm. just like, I, I, I just looked at them and seen what they were going through. And I said to me, Dad, listen, you can think I'm a bad person, but I don't want to do that. I, I, I just don't want because I'm living what I've just been living for the past four mm. and a half years every day. I need to just break free. So, 
it's keeping that emotional involvement in what you've been through isn't yeah, it? yeah exactly it's just dragging it up but even for the family it's dragging it up it's just like we just come to a decision like that's it it's 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 been and gone it's it's like i said when it first started it seems like another lifetime because i've just buried it it's gone i mean i've been in my bed 10 years 10 years today she'll kill me not saying it <laughs> uh, <laughs> never speak about it not once have we ever like like went into detail or she hasn't like asked me or what was it like we'll watch like something about like uh like a louis Theroux. like a like and i was like, like watching like the miami prison, prison. Like, yeah, yeah it's wow, good that it's like, good fuck that and she's like <laughs> are you messing <laughs> and i was like oh yeah yeah <laughs> you just forget about it but she it just it's just it's not even like the elephant in the room it's just not there it's not a thing yeah. not a thing it's it's why would it be it's it makes yeah, it yeah. even more of a privilege mate for us to to get you on and share the yeah, story then mate because it's it's, it's it's fascinating sad. mate and i'm again just really really grateful yeah well, mate honestly i can't like and i hope i hope we've given you know obviously this little podcast that we started two years ago well less than two years ago mate it's an absolute honor it really is i hope we've given it's genuinely mate, been one of my favorite probably because oh. this is a story mate where I've kind of knew, but not known. I maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. disrespectful. Not give it the time. It's you know, it's in my city. You're a match going lad. I should have maybe known more about it, and I haven't. So to get to sit down, mate. I'm no, it's been good. It's been good. Grateful. Yeah. Thank you Cheers. so much, mate. No yeah. worries. You're a star. Thank you, mate.